And welcome to the Bowls New Zealand YouTube coverage of the 2023 Multi Nations Broadcasting live today from the Broad Beach Bowling Club. My name is Alex Reid and I'm joined in commentary today by Kevin Hickland. Kevin, we've got a good match up on our hands today. Talk us through who we're going to be watching. Yeah, we certainly have right here in front of us now a crucial singles match that's between our New Zealand player uh, Andrew Kelly up against uh, Aaron Wilson. Uh, Wilson, of course, the... Uh, well, the star of the singles gold medalist at uh, the Commonwealth Games and unbeaten to date in this event. And our, the Andrew Kelly uh, needing this event uh, to, uh, to make sure that New Zealand go through in the pairs. Also, New Zealand teams in action out here right now is the women's pairs and women's triples. They're playing on the green out here in front of us, but our concentration will be, of course, on this men's singles match. And great news this morning for the men's full side, who did start uh, scratchy, of course, on Saturday, uh, but the start this morning brought, brought off a magnificent victory against Australia, uh, which saw one of the Australian uh, sides now no longer required for the semi-final, mm. and the New Zealand side skipped by Raymond Martin in this morning, getting that victory and they are now through to the semi-final uh, which will be in fact played this afternoon as will the women's triples and women's pairs uh, semi-final That's, that's right, that the semi-final but later on, yeah. we played later on today. So we've got a full day of action for you as we watch out in front of us now and looks as though it's the jack level bowl of Aaron Wilson there, the multi-blue stripe bowl which is shot playing here at Broad Beach and good to see Alex here, perfect conditions, just a zephyr of a breeze, really, uh, ideal conditions. Three, in fact, it is, to uh, Aaron Wilson in the uh, opening end. And a great start for the Australian. We all, we all know how good this guy is. But also, it's fair to say, uh, uh, Alex, we saw the tenacity yesterday uh, of... Uh, of Andrew Kelly, especially in the skipping the, that fours yesterday. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, he was outstanding yesterday uh, in the game against uh, Queensland. And you'll watch here now, Wilson so quick on the mat. And the jack delivered right to the two-metre mark. And he's, as we've seen on numerous occasions in following uh, Aaron Wilson, uh, Alex, he certainly doesn't uh, muck around, does he? No, he doesn't. No, no, he doesn't. It's going to be a nice uh, a pace game. It was interesting. We covered a game of singles between Andrew Kelly and the Irish player, Adam McEwen, I think was his name. Yes. On the first day of this multi-nations. And Adam, real fast on the mat, Andrew very deliberate. And we're going to see a similar, Absolutely. I think a similar contrast in styles here today. I'm interested, intrigued to see uh, how it plays out. Well, I'm sure, you know, Andrew Kelly, I think, in this particular tournament to date, has shown uh, uh, real maturity in his play, his game management, and it has had been a bit of a challenge because he's been jumping around from skipping the fours to playing singles. Sheldon Bagley Harley has also uh, played singles, so you know he's certainly dressed with a big challenge this afternoon uh, up against. Uh, uh, Wilson, of course, and there you'll see the second bowl of uh, Wilson's after scoring a three on the first end. Draws Jack Level Bowl. Perfect conditions here at the picturesque Broad Beach Club. We're just only, in fact, about 200 metres from the sea. So we're really... It's a, it's an idyllic spot here, really, Alex, isn't mm. it, at Broad Beach? Certainly, as we see Aaron Wilson getting off to a flyer of a start here. He scored a three on the first end, which we'll see on our scoreboard in a second. And on this end, throwing the jack to the two-metre mark. Holding two already, he started off well. He certainly has. He's got that jack level shot ball. And here he comes again. He'll go past the two metre mark. He won't be uh, too concerned about that. They're in fact playing right out in front of us. So it's uh, absolutely idyllic conditions today. Kelly, that very deliberate stance on the mat. Yeah, he's been given this task. This is the last game, of course, of the singles section plan. It's crucial for New Zealand. We need Andrew Kelly, we think, to get to at least 17 points here to have a real chance at uh, going through to the semi-final spot. And here he is oh, on his backhand side. The bowl. He's got a great bowl. He's just going to sit alongside it, just sitting jack level. One to the Australian, one to Aaron Wilson. But a good bowl played by He's very, very... He's, he's a intimidating to play against his... Uh, Wilson here he is straight away, looking for results, looking for the Kelly Bowl. Oh, Sets just about. Just about. Well, he could well have made two of that, fell back in. And you'll see right throughout the game with Aaron Wilson, he's always hunting for uh, opportunities. 
that's the thing that makes him so dangerous and he's been so successful for so long too. Uh, Aaron Wilson now, he's, uh, has he uh, won the last two Commonwealth Games singles gold medals? That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, he's a, a very, very good player. Very good player indeed. Here's Kelly now on his backhand. At least one down, perhaps two, trying to get up to the... Has he got the weight to get all the way down to the counting area? I don't, don't think, think he's, he's made it, Kev. No, he lacks a metre. He may be two down there. Looks like on the angle from where we're looking at here. We'll see where the, it is. The marker very quickly puts up the green lollipops to, to the Australians. They jump out to a 5-0 lead. Thank you to all those helpers and volunteers who are doing the marking, doing the scoreboards at certain... The, uh, for Alex and myself makes uh, life just that much easier. Yeah, it keeps things simple, doesn't it, Kev? And for you people sitting at home watching, you can clearly see what's, go what's going on. So, um, all, and to date, we've still got the singles, of course, to go. To date, that's fair to say, Alex, uh, a good start to the campaign. Going well for New Zealand, certainly. Uh, there's, uh, there's a couple of scratchy moments on the first day, but they've pushed past it, the teams, and everyone really in with a real chance, if not already been in the semi-final of making a semi-final at the events that have been played so far. Well, the fours came back and won four games in a row. You know, yeah. it, it's at this level is, uh, you know, it's very, very good. But you see straight away the consistency that we always see with Wilson that, that about getting that first bowl effectiveness that we spoke about yesterday, Alex, and he's always in and around that sort of metre to the jack area. It's, re it's relent relentless, isn't it, he really? He certainly is. And the issue with that is if you think you're going to take three or four ends to settle in, you're going to be staring down the barrel of a double-figure double figure deficit. And that's not a, much, not a very fun place to be, but Andrew Kelly here. Good ball Look at here. This. Good ball. Well played from Andrew Kelly. Sits level with the jack. It's definitely the shot. Wilson, Wilson quickly into his work. Beautiful he, shot. He'll be on the search to get to the bowl, the jack, or a bit of movement. Looks from here. Is he going to just drift underneath, is he? Yes, he will. But you can see straight away... And, and, Alex, it must be, if, if you're playing against a player like that, it must be extremely unsettling because <laughs> where do you go? Well, what, he, he is relentless and he's good enough to play any shot in the book. So you think often if you play someone who, say, plays a raker game, you think, well, I'll leave you a dead draw and good luck with that. But Aaron Wilson would just go, OK, I'll put four bowls within a foot. Absolutely. <laughs> so it, it doesn't go away, does it? So Andrew Kelly now getting down. Will he get to the back bowl? He'll turn his own around behind the head. Good That's job. well played, actually. Sits right on there. You'll see there the clearly marked uh, centre line asking the marker whether he's one or two down. I think it's one. We'll see what the marker... He might have indicated one on a measure. I didn't, couldn't quite see what the umpire... This is the longest I've ever... Oh, just the one. This is the longest I've ever seen Aaron Wilson take the player pole. <laughs> Getting but there, isn't it? It's taken it's nearing 30 seconds now. Aaron Wilson on the backhand. But look how good this is, Kev. Through that bowl square. Beautiful shot. <laughs> Never looked like missing for a second, did it? And he's no, it on it's in it's fine just, form here. It's just, as you rightly said, Alex, it's, uh, it's just relentless as continual charge to the jack or shot bowls. And his weight control is absolutely... Outstanding, you know. He just sort of, he, he's always around the area, isn't he? Yeah, Andrew Kelly going to be under the line, and this is the, the danger. Ball. You start searching, you know, start searching for line, searching for weight. Whereas the thing about uh, Wilson, he plays the same weight literally on these Australian greens. Literally plays the same weight all the time, and so whether he's drawing the shot, playing through a bowl, doing whatever is required, that's what Aaron Wilson tends to do, and it's a. I can tell you, if you're an opponent, it's very, very, it's daunting. Here we see Aaron on the forehand, and he's got, look at the weight he's got with these four bowls. This one might be a little bit, sh no, it's not going to be short. Not going to these be. four bowls, that's a sign of great touch, isn't it? You well, know, it is, there's four bowls within, if you look at it, the, the shortest one's at 12 o'clock and the furthest one back is at seven, and there would be no more than two bowls of space between you them. Could, well, a tea towel would cover the four yeah. bowls, wouldn't it? You know, that's that. Uh, and it's, uh, it is so challenging. He is, there, oh, well, I think, more than likely, along with Alex Marshall, would be the best singles player in the, in, in the world. Yep. I, I think they'd be right up there uh, as, as the, best, the best singles player. And for, for whoever is lining up against uh, Aaron Wilson... Uh, you know very, very well that you've got uh, a huge challenge. Now, 
to all you New Zealanders back at home, or wherever you may be, if you want to check on all the results, of course, they're there on the Bowls New Zealand website, all updated, progress, the tables, the charts. You'll see where the New Zealand teams Elaine as we see Kelly on the charge trying to get to the shot pole. Great There's shot, you know, and great pole. And that should give Kelly the shot using the spot philosophy. And I heard Aaron Wilson say one, and to me, the way, how things went, it would have to be. So we see, is that one, two, New Zealand? Yes, because it was only the only bowl behind the jack was that bowl of Andrew Kess. Now, to me, really, Alex, that showed the confidence that we saw yesterday as well with with Andrew Kelly. Oh, I'm expecting you know, a good game yeah, here. Yeah. You know, he was down on the head to a very tight head then, and played the you know, played to a one shot target really, and really just, we saw him yesterday in that fours where he skipped the fours. He was absolutely outstanding. So that could just be the encouragement early on in this match that Andrew Kelly needs, of course, to just get him on track to... Well, yeah, I think for the player, if you're playing someone, we, spoke, we speak about it, I feel like we talk about it every time we watch two top singles exponents play bowls, but they're all capable of stringing those four or five ends together. A Aaron Wilson's a special case. He could probably go seven or eight ends, but yeah, they're capable of having those bursts where we see... Four perfect bowls every end. Well, you just saw it at the end, didn't you? There's four within you know, half a metre, and literally. You know, that's what. And so, therefore, it's about how you can mitigate that, isn't it, Kevin? Well, Andrew Kelly did a good job that end in particular did, but of again, mitigating that. I come back, you know, and this, I'm not having to go at our player at all, Andrew Kelly at all. It's about as well how he sets the head up with that first bowl mm. effectiveness, Alex, where he gets that first bowl always, always within you know, a very close proximity to, uh, to, to the jack. As we see, this bowl, just what we spoke about, going to go by, but had the perfect line to the jack. So all the results you'll see on the Bowls New Zealand website, round by round, the tables, and no doubt, well, after well after this round, you'll be able to see how things lay for New Zealand going through into the semi-finals, and uh, who they'll be playing today. And tomorrow we move, of course, we change the disciplines around tomorrow. So be, we won't be online, won't be no commentary tomorrow. So Kelly, well played inside the uh, Wilson Bowl, draw shot. Foot behind. W Wilson asking how, f how far behind, a foot behind the, the uh, marker. I'm sorry, I don't know the marker's name, but we'll try and find out who this very good marker is who's keeping us posted of what's going on, uh, bowl, bowl, land, the jack straight away on Great the trail. Shot, look at that. Well, he looks for that search all the time, down with that sort of searching weight, gets underneath. How far low is my bowl, How far low is my bowl? <laughs> Andrew Kelly just uh, making sure that he's well and truly heard there. How far low is my bowl? I could just about hear him without the headphones. It's good. And it's two. You'll see the marker there. The ITO. Putting the lollipops up, two to uh, two to Wilson, and just as we spoke about how he plays the game, how Aaron Wilson plays the game, Alex was a, a true. It's just how he goes. Uh, Kelly now on the forehand side is looking to use the bowl as a shoulder if he has to. Tight on the narrow side at the moment. That bowl just passing underneath the line. It stayed up on the green, though, so that's a positive there for Andrew Kelly. You can see to the left of your screen that there ball is staying up on the green. Just below the ditch board. So that's that's his, posit that's his takeaway from it, isn't it, Kev? At least he's yep. now got a bowl to count back in Aaron Wilson. I mean, I did, barely didn't have time to, to really say he was playing a bowl there. No, well, and, no time. and more than likely counts as well, actually. We'll see what the marker has to say. Uh, still just the two. You'll see... At least with Andrew Kelly, he makes his way slowly back to the mat. We have a chance to see what actually goes yeah. on. But, uh, Do you think it's still a forehand shot for the New Zealander? Kev? I think it's still a swoop down there to that. You know, he can use his own bowl as well. You know, that, that's the other option. Looking out here in front of us, right down in front of us here, they're playing. And even he gets to his own bowl, Alex can get a. Uh, so Andrew Kelly just asking the marker. If he could just stand aside fractionally so he can 
see his line down to the jack that deliberate stance of Andrew Kelly who do doubt it'll attack down on that forehand Jack's been moved off the two metre mark here's Kelly now he's got a certainly got this on a wider arc than his first is it going to come back now needs to start working coming now He's needs close. to get to his own gets his own clean through can make, great bowl. well played fantastically great bowl. played by Andrew Kelly and that's the shot that we said Alex that if he could get to that bowl he had a chance of turning that into a shot and that was well played and the other really good thing about how that was played was his weight control to get to get down and not lose the other bowl as well because no doubt we're going to see Aaron Wilson. Well, the scary thing here is we've got one, and we hope that we still have one in about 20 seconds, well, but we the, might be three down. Well, the ball's sticking out. That's the worst as aspect of it for, for Kelly. I hope it starts to cut now. This it's is going very close. To, that's this close. is very there goes. good. And Jack got the lot. That's a very good bowl, but Andrew Kelly's bowl that went underneath the head and sat there may have cut that down to one to the Australian there, I feel. Yeah, there's two because we've got just the one there. It is. You clearly heard it there from the marker. Just the one, 6-1 to Aaron Wilson. But as you rightly said, Alex, just the way here that bowl was positioned, that was the weight that uh, Wilson was always going to play. It's uh, one of those times as a player, you play the good bowl, you sit with the shot, and you go, I'm mentally prepared here to still drop a two or a three. And if I don't, that's a win. <laughs> that's a yeah, positive. It's uh, his, uh, his weight control to the line is outstanding. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys can play with the weight, but it's that line control, uh, Alex, to get to, to get to a bowl or the centre line. And that's what Wilson's so good at here is with his opening bowl going right past the jack down to the two metre mark. So that does leave a good opening here for Andrew Kelly. Trailing 6-1 in this race to 25, this all-important singles match. Remember, Aaron Wilson's already qualified to go through into the uh, semi-finals later today. And from the New Zealand point of view, we need this one for New Zealand to be there. And Kelly draws inside the bowl. That'll be shot. And quickly into his work will be Wilson. There it is on its way on the forehand. And he just he'll stay on that very consistent line. You don't see him very often lose his line. Here he comes to the jack, just goes Good by the jack. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see whether the marker indicates anything. No, he doesn't. So Andrew Kelly would just try and follow his other his bowl. We see Andrew Kelly on the forehand. Settled in with his first bowl a bit more than we'd seen on the first few ends, though, to be fair. Yes, Kevin. he That's has. A good That's a good bowl. opening bowl, and this bowl here is just going to depend on the weight if he gets all the way down. No, Still he won't. Still a good line. A perfect line, but missed that metre and a half, two metres of weight. He'll be disappointed now. We'll see Wilson come around that bowl and try and get down to the jack. He's definitely on a wider track than his first two. Again, Alex, is very, very helpful, isn't it? These... Uh, these uh, lines on the outsides, you can... Uh, I really like uh, them. Uh, I really like them. I'd like to... Fantastic. You know, if we could make it work in New Zealand, I'd be quite happy to play on a, a, really on good. a green like very, that. Very helpful. Here's Kelly now on his forehand. I'm saying he's one down to the bowl of uh, Aaron Wilson. On the forehand is Kelly. How far has he brought that line in? That's my only concern here. Gets past it. Needs to get the jack. Needs it to get down. Well, gets oh, the, well he's got a roll on the bowl. Won't be enough, I don't think. We'll see. No, the marker indicating it is still... Still one. just searching a little bit for uh, his weight at this early stage in the game. Well, I say early stage. It's first to 21, so it could go for a while. Uh, but there's always a danger, isn't there? And yeah, that's a good bowl there from Aaron Wilson. Well, so. the gate was left open, really, wasn't it? Yeah, that metre was sort of left open to... Andrew Kelly would expect himself to draw this nine times out of ten on most days. Well, he's got a, he's got a metre really to the, either side there, Alex, to get down to the centre line and get to the counting area. So here is now Kelly on his forehand. Aaron Wilson, of course, dual gold medalist, Commonwealth Games. Good line here from the New Zealander. How's the weight though? Is it going to come back enough to get to the bowl? No, it won't. Just mm. goes by. And this is quickly opening up. 8-1. This will go to Australia. If, my, if the marker indicated it was two. 
Well, I've put it onto the scoreboard, so... <laughs> it is two. <laughs> That'll so have to be yeah, it. The, the uh, marker had already indicated the two shots. Yeah, it's not it's not stressy times yet for New Zealand, but bowls like that where Andrew Kelly, such a good player and in such good form, you know, that's a three. it's really a three-point swing because he should have been able to draw the shot there. Well... It should be six. It should be six two. Well, the, the, the uh, which we have the opportunity to take advantage of the last bowl, Alex, because mm. we did have the uh, opportunity then with a the meter, with the last bowl. No, he's quite capable, you know. Absolutely. One of, one of the cool, well, one of the things I think Andrew uh, does really well is his um, his his bowls mindset. You know, oh, he's very much so. One so of the more dogged, I think, bowlers around. <coughs> and certainly he'll, is. He'll knuckle down, and until Aaron Wilson gets to twenty one points. Aaron Kelly, Aaron Kelly, Andrew Kelly will be giving it 110 percent here. Well, this one I see now, Kelly coming up towards us here in the clubhouse. He's changed the forehand, just trying to find a consistent line. I think he's certainly inside the line of the Aaron Wilson bowl now. It needs to come back. Has it got the weight though to get back? Trying hard to get all the way back. We'll get back part of the way. Still needs, yeah, it still needs. Look, I'm looking out the window here now, right in front of us. Needs a metre as he watches his second bowl of Wilson's now coming down. Looks to be under the head. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? This is a loose start to this end and a chance for Andrew Kelly to, to jump right on the jack with his second bowl. Well, the thing for Andrew Kelly now is just to beat his last bowl at this point in time and he'll have shot. Really, Alex, that should be his on goal the on the forehand and he's on the scoring line. So it's right... Kev, you mentioned the lines. You can see the lines running up the green. That's a good indication to the line that they've taken. So that bowl probably broke, what, a foot outside of that marker it's that you see to the right of your screen. You see the, 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 the whatever colour it is, blue line running down the, the screen to the right. It's just right. about, like, just over that line. Yes, you'll see the, watch yeah, this now bowl. You'll see. You're watching so now. He's a foot outside It'll and breaking come now. back in. And that's the perfect green there, and the yeah. players will know that. It sort of, it sort of helps a little bit, doesn't it, Kev? Yeah, it gets you have that perfectly. You know, physical sort of well, thing. Your 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 visualization, your your visualization is is clear of uh, what you need, you know, of what you need to do. Kelly asking for the marker to be, for the uh, marker to mark the toucher, yeah. indicating he might be playing with weight here to try and get to that last bowl of Wilson's but uh, Alex is so right about the use of these I call them sidelines uh, yeah I, li I really like them and look at this so we watch this bowl he's outside the line a little bit that would indicate that his green's good I don't know what his weight's like weight's not short there. but that, that was a nice line wasn't it right uh, in the middle of the green he's finished up I think there'd be you know I'm not being critical of Andrew Kelly but these are the times where you just cannot be short of the head Alex you know you've got to be yeah, you've got to, this, this will count as well. Gets under this bowl, and he will do. Well, now yeah. do we see a wind up from Andrew Kelly? Well, it's a difficult hit to drive oh, it. And it's a respot rule, isn't it, at this yeah. multi nations so, event? Therefore, so, there's no advantage, is there? Yeah, really? if it is killed, the best he could do is cut it down from three to two if you remove one bowl. Interesting to see what he decides to play anyway. On the forehand side, Andrew Kelly, well, the New Zealander going, with weight. Going for the jack. Praying for a good connection here. It needs to clear the front one. Got it square instead. It's going to be, it's going to be a number to the Australian. I think it's well. He said before the Marcus Hill one was a measure, so it's a, it's two and a measure. I would think is the call. Wilson knows how many he's got. He's got already two. He's he's not worrying about the measure. He knows he's got the two. But I, I think really from Andrew Kelly's point of view, Alex is. And I know I'll harp on about it, but he's got to get that first bowl effectiveness to be able to start to put pressure on Wilson and start to build the head. Because if you don't have that first bowl effectiveness, you're, you're chasing things immediate from there on in. So playing away from the clubhouse here at Broad Beach, playing down towards the road. Three greens here at... Uh, or four greens, in fact, here at Broad Beach. And all the action's right out in front of us here on the main green and the green furthest most end is down the seaward end. Also action down there. Slight breeze off the sea this afternoon, but certainly nothing like the breeze that we had yesterday up at mm. Musgrave Hill. And we're surrounded here by 
these absolutely magnificent apartments, complexes that's that sort of... Uh, I mean, it's not a bad place, is it, really, this area, this little corner of the world? It's, a, it's not bad. I've seen worse. As we see Andrew Kelly, that's a good first bowl. A bowl low, the Jack and Aaron Wilson so fast on the mat. No mucking around, and I think uh, probably you could argue that one of the reasons why Aaron is able to string four, five, six, seven, eight ends in a row together where he's playing four essentially perfect bowls is that he doesn't give himself any time to lose that form, does he? He's oh, just no, straight he on the mat and no, plays the ball. No, he doesn't. He, he works out very quickly where his line is. Of course, his wife as well. <coughs> uh, Jamie Lee Worship, she's also here in the Australian side as well. So the, the Wilsons are here in force. <laughs> Absolutely. As we see Andrew Kelly on his forehand, just falling a little bit short with the second ball. I can tell you we've got um, a few games going on, or is it just one game going out on out here at Broad Beach, and the women's pairs are trailing at the moment 2-8 after four, although, of course, the women's pairs, New Zealand has the right to have a, a women's pairing in the semi-final a bit later on anyway in the way that they finished on the on the ladder. So the, the result of this game, not super-duper important for the New Zealanders' hopes. It just could make a difference to where they finish on the ladder and who plays who couldn't I suppose yeah and it's about getting yeah. the bowls in and just keeping you still got to play you know, if you're there you've got to play someone don't you so, so the, the New Zealand pairing see uh, and this is is this the right this is a better line from close, Kelly Kev. he has the weight though he's, he's got close, enough needs to, it to run down. out that's enough that's shot and sits just outside the centre line and Wilson this, I've never seen him walk so slowly <laughs> and the umpire, the uh, marker indicating that it's one and a measure in favour of uh, the New Zealander, uh, Andrew Kelly. And I'm sure, and you don't, you won't see Aaron uh, Wilson uh, very often change his hand to look at other options. So what was he looking at there, Kev? What do you think he I walked up ahead to look at? I think he was trying to check whether he, he, he just confirmed him with the marker, perhaps, or he didn't go all the way down, though, did he? So who'd indicated that it was... Well, more likely two down, but and making a liar on me because here he is going quickly now. Is he outside it? Yes, no, oh, he's not. Oh, he's cleared out both. Well, here's a chance for New Zealand. Open door here for New Zealand to pick up a couple. Definitely holding one shot on the drive. Didn't get the the ultimate result. Did uh, Aaron Wilson? And as we see Andrew Kelly make his way down, he's on one point, looking to improve on that, looking to stick with it, you know, hang in there, see if you can score a couple of ends in a row yourself, so he's got a chance to make this two on his forehand side, Andrew Kelly, and then I think we will see a change in, in either where the mat is placed or the jack is thrown, Kev. Oh, absolutely, well, he has to change something around, doesn't he, to... Uh Endeavour to get so some important this ball and looks pretty good to date. Well played, and this will count. He'll sit inside his own pole. That's two shots for the New Zealander. That takes it to 10 3. And Aaron Wilson giving a little clap, which is fine. Passing the passing the mats over to Andrew Kelly. Now, so he's placing the mat in the same position, and it's interesting to see what length the elect to play. He must. He ideally, it must like, be a change. Well, ideally, he'd like to be playing from there to the two metre mark. But whether he's comfortable with that, so we see. Also, if you look at the scoreboard, no, he's going shortened it right up. But yeah, good call. If you look at the scoreboard, you'll note that the Australian score is in. I think that's green. <laughs> And the yes. New Zealand one is a, a black gradient. That's to reflect the country colour. So obviously with New Zealand and Australian, it's just two colours. But with the other countries, there's going to be different colours to match just on the scoreboard. Just to go along with the flag and the names as well. Kevin Very Gore. good. May as well. In for a penny, in for a pound. So right out in front of us here now, here's Andrew Kelly on the backhand with his first bowl trailing 10-3 to a far shorter length jack. Breaks towards the jack now. Going to finish just alongside the jack. Does Good it touch? Shot. No, it doesn't. Good opening bowl quickly onto the forehand is Wilson. And you heard a bit of support there from, I think, the rinkside coach. I can see 
if we look outside our window, there's the vast majority of the New Zealand team along the rink watching this oh, men's singles match. So he's oh, got no lack of support, Andrew Kelly. And they're all out there. You can see them all sitting there watching. So Kelly now to build on that. He owns the length. So he's scoring on that last end. Now to make to score again. This is a good track here from Andrew. It's coming well, gets inside the Wilson Bowl and will sit on behind, won't count, but it's in a good position on the forehand again. We'll see the Australian, we'll see, we'll see Wilson on that, on that forehand. It's coming towards the centre line now, coming in towards the counter, will make good two shot. of it, sat on the bowl. I think really now Andrew Kelly's got to try and play to get to that trail. So fast this end has turned around. That was looking okay for Andrew Kelly. 40 seconds ago, 45 seconds ago, it wasn't looking too bad. And Aaron Wilson's just played that second bowl, set the shot bun out, now yeah. sitting with two, and there's all the work to do in the world for Andrew Kelly here. But the lesson is, yeah, real top players like this, Alex, you know, he, he doesn't lose his bowl. He just controls his weight to the, you know, to the target area. So Kelly... On the forehand side. Oh, it was a good chance for him to get down to the jack on the trail. He's Here's got he, the weight, it's perfect. No, he hasn't got the weight to get to the jack trail. He might cut one of them out, though. Sits low. Uh, two Still two was the was the nod from the uh, marker. Aaron Wilson not mucking around on his forehand side. Doesn't use a lot of the mat either, Kev. There's not, many, not much of his foot left on it <laughs> when he's letting go of the bolt. <laughs> And now we have a target. Do we have a target? Yes, we do. No, this is where, to me, these are the conversion shots of uh, Andrew's just got to get the, some the, of the, the supporters the, there. Uh, Tony Grantham, Kelvin Scott, the, all the New Zealand fours or the New Zealand men's team sitting oh. in alongside there. Here's a question, Kev. What weight? What weight do you think Andrew Kelly will play this There's bowl? No with? sense in playing ditch weight because you're going to be down anyway because he's still got a bowl left. He's going to draw. So ideally, to play with weight to get through the bowls, move the jack. Because there is two bowls of Andrew, I think there's two bowls of Andrew Kelly's that are in behind there, so there is a chance to get the Jack Trail. So we're thinking a perfect, a perfect bowl from Andrew Kelly on his forehand side. Well, the big thing is not to steer the bolt under the line. It's on its way. Needs it to hold up. But he's done exactly what we just spoke about, uh, Alex. Not what to do is to steer the bowl under that centre line. There was the, as you see, those two bowls there. It's going to be a four, Kev. And that's a disappointing end for New Zealand there. And look at that. I mean, it's just uh, Aaron Wilson's playing so well at the moment. You have to try and weather the storm and then claw your way back. But uh, it's, uh, it's not easy to do. And Aaron no, of Wilson, course. No, perfect, of course it's not. A wall of bowls, perfect weight, right in line with the jack. One, two, three. You look at that, just directly across, beautiful touch. And it's going to be, it will be a four there for the Australian, Aaron Wilson. Double Commonwealth Games, gold medalist. Look at that stuff. That's great bowl. I think I can just about back who will be the Australian singles player in the World Bowls. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would be a surprise if he wasn't, wouldn't it? We'll just double check. So one, two, three, and it is four. The four. It jumps to 14-3. But it also it highlights where, I suppose, Alex, I'm not... Yeah, I'll say it's where there's got to be a bit of concentration in, in, in the development coaching he got heading for the World Bowls is that we've got to my view you you uh, you watch numerous tapes of players like Aaron, Aaron Wilson and just see how you don't lose your bowl don't steer your bowl don't get your bowl under the center line and really if you look at what Wilson's doing that's the essence of how he's playing isn't it yeah it is and if we think um, so Andrew Kelly he's been playing for a very long time he's 314 down we think if New Zealand gets to about 17 points, there's a big chance of a semi-final berth. What's the plan here? You know, what's going through Andrew Kelly's head? What's his plan back? We can afford for Aaron Wilson to score six more points. Well, you know, you just you, you've got to score and say it's nil all, and then away. You know, get get your length, own own, you know, going your length. But see, that's under the line, and it, it may hold up for shot, but it still leaves. For Wilson, quite a bit of room, of course. We know how he'll be playing on the forehand. Here he goes again. It just, he's just, his consistency is. Uh, this time, though, he's under the line. 
but you'll see that he's playing with weight to get through to the jack all the time. Sits jack level. Now the big thing here for Kelly is to be bold. Be bold, try and get to the shot bowl or jack, get a bit of movement. On the forehand side. He's doing well with his body language, Andrew Kelly. Sort of staying focused. Oh, this is a bit of line. This is good stuff Deserves here. Deserves the result. Great but shot there from Andrew Kelly. Beautiful bolt, fighting away. And that's the sort of weight that's got to be played, Alex, when uh, when you're down, on, especially on these surfaces with these guys. That's the sort of weight you've got to play. You've got to be always reaching through. So someone just moving in the background. Well. And again, Aaron Wilson taking longer than normal. Yes, well, that's no doubt he's looking for the jack in the ditch, I would imagine. On the forehand, <laughs> just doesn't muck around. He's, oh, sorry, on his backhand. Well, looking for the jack trail to his own bowl and behind there, isn't he? And this could get a nasty result for New Zealand. No, he turns it. Here's a chance. Over. This Here's is the first chance. chance we've had in it a long is. time. Yeah, but the big thing for Andrew Kelly needs to get to the blue bowl and behind there, and he would still count if he got to that. If he can get to that blue bowl and behind, it will still count because we know that, that that Wilson will definitely be searching down there for... He will know how important this bowl is, Andrew Kelly. Two good bowls on the head, even if he's got a good green here. He's watching this bowl. Needs to get that one square, needs to hold up just a little bit. Doesn't want to slice the jack. He's got well, away with it, Kev. He's lies, holding three. Lies three. Holding three for about 17 seconds, I would suggest. <laughs> but it's that. It's that. Oh, Andrew, Aaron's up there, so it might be more like a minute it before might the be. check gets moved back. But as far as Wilson's concerned, it's on that sort of cluster line that he likes to play to. Uh, we'll see Wilson yeah. sweeping down on the backhand. I suppose the good thing, though, is at least Andrew Kelly, the New Zealander, is holding three points. So you're making oh, a absolutely. playable yeah. under he's pressure still instead of the, adding. Yeah, he's still going he's to he's get the shot. You know, he's still yeah. going to play it. What all we're saying is that you know, the, the logical shot he's that on he, his he forehand. Playing, he's on his forehand. Yeah. Is this bigger weight here? He's going jack. Bigger weight from Aaron Wilson. On the forehand side, looking to use the inside bowl. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, he got rid of a couple of them. That's a good shot there. Uh, for 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 Wilson reductions as good as scoring really. Yeah, beautiful yeah. shot. No well call. That was a smart call really from Aaron Wilson. Well, he had a two-target option there, didn't he? Really, the bowls or the or, or, or the jack. That was uh, with that weight too. A collision bowl, the one that's in your hand, shears off at a real sharp angle. So those bowls that were just a little bit low of the head, if Aaron had hit them. He has given himself every chance in the world for all the collision bowls to come across and, and remove uh, Andrew Kelly's, which is the logic. And just having a chat here, he is to Mike Carroll, Andrew Kelly. I wonder what the conversation is. What do you think he's talking about, Kev? Well, re really, it, it's, it's just, a, to me, just get down there, give him a bit of confidence, draw the shot and, and go from there. You know, that's the... Don't want to make it too... You know, he, Andrew Kelly's been around long enough. He knows... Uh, you know, he knows that he knows the challenge right from the outset. He knew the challenge of playing, uh, of, of playing Aaron Wilson, and this looks a pretty good line. How's the weight? Needs to get to this blue bowl. He sits inside this He's blue done bowl. It. Good shot. That more than likely makes two of it. We'll see what the marker is, has to say. I think it's two. And the uh, indication was it is two. Well played, Andrew Kelly. That takes us. A two to the New Zealander in this race, two twenty-one, and two ends in a row as well. Kev, this is good. This is good work here from Andrew Kelly, just chipping away. Doesn't need to go up in numbers, even just go end after end after well, end. Perhaps, perhaps as well, Mike Carroll may well have been just talking to him about what's the number we need. You know, just sure a W is great. Careful, but, Andrew. But, but what's the number we need? He's lost the jack. See the jack overthrow, and that's not the plan. That's not the plan there, and uh, of course, in bowls, if the jack is overthrown or thrown outside of the confines of the rink, which you do not see, you don't see them thrown out of the confines of international play, but you do see them go into the ditch. Uh, the opposition has the opportunity to deliver the jack to the, their length. If Aaron then misthrows the jack again, Andrew could place the mat wherever he would like it to be placed. I think, to be fair to both the players, especially that of Wilson, He's not going to worry what length the jack is, really. He's one of those players whereby, you know, he's, he's he, 
he's just so steady, so consistent. But good news, of course, for New Zealand in this Maldi Nations, knowing that our New Zealand men's fours team are through to the uh, semi-final, which we played later on this afternoon. And joining them will be the New Zealand women's, the Blackjack women's pairs and triples. They've also won their way through in the semi-finals this afternoon. And we'll be bringing you uh, live coverage, of course, of one of those matches. And uh, we'll endeavour, of course, watch the scoreboards to try and give you some updates. It's difficult to be able to be precise in that. Touch it from... Andrew Kelly. Yeah, it was a great shot. But look at this, Aaron Wilson. There's a, a toucher as it coming back the other way, just going to sit alongside. That's fine because it's a, you know, it's like a double jack target there for, for Andrew Kelly. You can play, sit through the bowl. And the best place on the on the note of results, Kev, the website's really good, but the other place to go to, the Bowls New Zealand uh, Facebook page, which has been updated by the Blackjacks team manager, Julie Blake. Thank you, Julie. Uh, has a number of updates that's sort of popping through as the days go on and pictures and graphics and all that sort of stuff. So if you're wanting the well most played up, here, Andrew Kelly. Great well show. played here from Kelly. Sits inside the Wilson Bowl. That's the shot that we spoke He's about. He's up for it, Kev. He's well, up we for had this. the opportunity there. That's like a two-jack target with that bowl falling into there. Wilson quickly in his work trying to sit the bowl, get down to the jack. He's on the line. He's going to be outside it. He's got it. Needs to come back from now. Just going to go as it touches oh, it, he touches actually, it. Aaron hit the jack onto Andrew's bowl where you then sat the bowl adjacent Andrew's bowl down. It's like watching dominoes. Andrew Kelly asked him what the gap is between the jack and the bowl. Four inches is there. You hear the marker clearly indicate. And that's right down in front of us here on rink eight at Broad Beach. And you can see the blue bowl there in the, in the middle and the bowl of Andrew Kelly's just sitting jack low on the forehand is uh, Andrew Kelly to the three quarter length head holding the shot at smooth delivery of Kelly's now endeavouring to get up into the counting positions on a good line on a good line Close here, here. where's it going to sit if it sits inside the blue fell out, bad luck But un it was a bit unlucky, it was a well played bowl and impressed with the fight, look at that Aaron Wilson, just doesn't muck around straight onto the mat He's looking for this one. Call it in, Kev. Well, uh, looking for the jack as uh, Wilson's going to get into the target area. As he turns the... Well, he rocked over that bowl of Andrew Kelly's. Now, to be, the really good thing about this, if you look at the head, Alex, there's one, two, there is uh, five bowls there, all within a couple of feet of one another, cluttered, cluttered around the jack. And, you know, that... <laughs> That highlights the quality. There's a back bowl there somewhere I can see. Oh, there it is. I can see the shadow of the Aaron Wilson bowl, which is the deepest on the rink. Kelly, so... So what do we do here? Well, I'm just seeing whether Andrew is the chance to play the jar, the shunt onto his own bowl, which can turn the... which could possibly turn that bowl out of uh, Aaron Wilson's and leave uh, Andrew C Kelly lane three. It's certainly an opportunity, isn't it? Just needs to have a yard of weight over what he just played with his second bowl, and that's exactly what he's doing, trying to get, playing down on the back end to get that jar, but he's going to be under the he's line. He's it. it. would have been head, tempted. Head went down, he knew straight away. So I suppose the reason he played it on the back end, not the forehand, is because on the back end it's harder to accidentally chip off your shot. Well, ball. also it takes away from the jack movement as mm. well, that, that if, if, if he's a wee bit off target. But he'd be disappointed with that because that was a good scoring, well, a, a good scoring opportunity. Wilson holding yeah, yeah. the shot, though, as Kelly quickly into his work on the forehand, playing up towards us here at the, uh, the, the club room's end at Club Broad Beach. Aaron Wilson very close with this bowl. He's very close, and he's got it. What a shot. What a bowl. That's just absolute class there. He may have even made that more than one give, such well, as the touch. It just did drew to the jack and just got the bearest to touch. It's Beautiful. clean on the jack. We'll see whether the marker has got the lollipop out just for the one, calling for the measure on the second one. I think the international technical officer official he uh, had the lollipop out indicating it was just the one but calling for the tape so yeah Bowls New Zealand of course great work updating on Facebook right throughout the day right throughout the event and I'm sure now as we get to those just the one it was as we're getting down to those latter stages and semi-finals this afternoon I'm sure 
that the Bulls New Zealand Facebook page will be updated <laughs> throughout those that's semi-finals. That's exactly right, Kev. <laughs> Which we can't actually do, Alex, but I'm sure that's going to happen this afternoon. Yeah, that, someone will do it, Julie. <laughs> uh, but it'll be updated here in a great place to go and find all the results. John Roberts, the marker, by the way, here at the international technical official marking here at the singles match in Aaron Wilson. That's uncharacteristic there. He's missed his line by a margin for him, really. For me, mortals, that's not too bad. That's but Aaron Wilson, that's a big miss. Yeah, it certainly is. For you and I, except it'll be one that we'd be... I'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Okay, thank you very much. That's, that's there or thereabouts. But it's not the way it works for these players. They expect better of themselves as well. And Andrew Kelly on the forehand side. Just trying to draw down inside that bowl of... Uh, the, the Aaron Wilson bowl will Beautiful. do so coming right down to the jack will sit the worst thing we're playing against Aaron Wilson is sit jack level jack, that's the worst you know, so that bowl of Kelly's is good because it's slightly jack low and counting but here he comes this is outside the line they don't think this will get all the way back to the jack no it won't I suppose the concern for New Zealand supporters at this stage because Andrew Kelly's playing better now he's sort of he's found his game and we trail by five so it's 15-5 the concern is it's only a game to 21 points. If it was to 25 or 31, you just feel like there's a bit more breathing space in this game. Yeah. But Aaron Wilson's only 7 points, 6 points away from winning this. Correct, guys. I got, I got mistaken before, Alex. I thought we were at the end of the centre. <laughs> 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 of course, it is 25. Yes. But that's two shots, though, to Andrew Kelly. Now, Wilson on the charge, trying to get down to that shot bowl of Kelly's. Is it going to hold for him? I don't think it will. I think, or is it going to hold neat to the bowl? No, Not it quite. isn't. Second shot, though, just disappeared through the, the gap. And Andrew. the big thing for Andrew Kelly is, <laughs> sounds terrible, but don't be scared about getting bowls on the head because that's you, you, when you're up against a player like this, you just got to have those bowls on the There's head and take here. a few risks. Switching to the back end, Andrew Kelly... So he played the forehand with his first two balls, switching to the backhand now. Well, perhaps if we can get a turn through on the blue as the well call. there, which is the call trying to get to. And just going to go by. But that's fine. It's over the head. It's at the back. That shot's there for him to play for a three-shot opportunity. So And really good intent shown by Andrew there. If we look where his ball finished, that's a good positive ball. So he is thinking about ways, you know... Uh, and for a penny and for a pound, oh, isn't it? I'm happy 15 to, five down. It's changing that I, game. Well, I'm happy, Andrew. Alex, to see him play with that weight rather than play with that searching weight where you can disappear under the line. If yeah. you're playing with that weight, you're going to hold up all the way down. Here's Wilson again. Certainly, he'll be looking for that jack. One down on the head, leading 15-5. He's certainly wider with this one. Will it come all the way back to draw? Got a feather on the way through. No, it won't. Just the one now. And here's a bonus bowl chance for Andrew Kelly. And I'd still be playing it on the backhand if I was Kelly because he can still sit inside those uh, the second and third shot of uh, Aaron w Wilson and score a couple. Yeah, you can afford to miss by more and get the same result, can't you? Absolutely. There's no so danger what, there. What we're talking about is beating the bowl that sits at 3 o'clock to the jack. Sort of a, what would you say, just about a metre a meter to the right as we see it on the backhand side. Andrew Kelly just taking his time here. Let's see what hand he lines up on, on the back end. So that's what he's trying to do. And these bonus bowls so important, particularly when you're trailing 15-5. He wants to make it 15-7 in about 15 seconds. Well, he's brought that line in. How how far has he brought that line in? On the If he's on the dead draw weight, he might be lucky. And he is. Oh. And then, he, then it set out. <laughs> He nearly was. We'll see what the uh, the ITO says. He's got two paddles ready, so there's that flat finish we talk a little bit about with these Australian these Australian greens on a domestic green. Andrew Kelly's bowl would have disappeared. But measure it, measure it, measure it. Oh, he's just, oh just the, the one. one. Yeah, I... Just the one there for Andrew Kelly. Not better than the alternative, I suppose. So 6.15 now. The New Zealander, remember, fighting for a spot in the semi-final berth. We think if, uh, if, all, if all sort of remains roughly equal, if New Zealand was to win this game, they'd be through to the semi-final. Or if Andrew can get to about 17 points, it should give a pretty good chance for a semi-final berth, depending on how some other games go on uh, around the rinks in this round. It's Andrew Kelly. 
Blackjack number 105, played 107 games in New Zealand prior to going into this particular event. Made his debut back in 2010 at one of our, we used to have this international event called the Eight Nations, and that's where Andrew Kelly made his uh, debut for New Zealand back in uh, 2010 as a real youngster and has been in and around the New Zealand scene uh, ever since then. This is a pretty good opening bowl, going to come back to the centre line. Again, playing right down in front of us here at the very picturesque Broad Beach Club, only a zephyr of a breeze here this afternoon. Look yeah. at this here from Aaron Wilson. Andrew Kelly drew a bowl within a foot of the jack. Aaron Wilson's going, well, that's fine. I'll just put one a bit closer than you. So Kelly now just endeavour to follow that, get inside that uh, the bowl of, of Wilson. And don't very often have husband and wife combinations playing for your country, but certainly with the wilson Warsip combination. It is the, on a good line here. This Kelly. is close here from Andrew Kelly. Just Needs on, it to get down. Uh, he got the wrong side unlucky. of it. Very, very unlucky. Played that well. Just mere centimetres, really, from getting the perfect, re perfect result and making two sh and making two shots of it. See Aaron Wilson on the forehand. Well, if he falls short, it's actually quite good because that tightens the lineup. If, if Andrew was to switch to that forehand side himself to try and move the jack back to the two white balls we see to the left, that bowl of Aaron Wilson's really tightened the lineup and sort of. Well, it's essentially removed it as an option, hasn't it, Kevin? Well, I'm going to ask you, is that the shortest bowl Aaron Wilson's played in this yeah, game? Yeah, yeah, and it's still, <laughs> it's still been effective. <laughs> still a good shot. So, Andrew Kelly, ideally, would like to get down to this blue bowl or draw right level to the jack, trying hard, just going to go by. But good to see him trying to attack for those particular opportunities that are there. One down on the head to the blue bowl, sitting right on the, uh, behind the two-meter mark, quickly into his work on the backhand is the Australian singles player and back-to-back -back Commonwealth Games gold medalist or, or, and goes by. No doubt we'll see. I've been told today the Australian side for the World Bowls is going to be announced this Saturday. So uh, no doubt Aaron Wilson will be uh, in that side and no doubt Aaron Wilson will be playing the singles yeah. for Australia. Yeah, you'd be very surprised if he wasn't. And Andrew and Kelly just making his decision here. There's two shots on out there. You could play your forehand or your backhand. Both of them involve potential jack movement. You could try and like jar the jack in on the forehand side with a bit he more weight a, underneath. He gets a jack touch, it's fine, or you know, with a yard through it or just under a yard through it, he gets it. He can get a three shot result. So can Andrew Kelly get to 15, 8, 15, 9? Sure, Wilson's got a bowl very left. Very square on the mat here, on the forehand side, I think. Yes, he is and on the forehand. No, he's not. He's on the backhand. Yeah, side. that's playing with more weight to get there. But is it going to come back all the way? No, it won't. That was the weight to play to get to the blue, but it just yeah. it had too much weight to get that result. He now he's it. quickly into his work straight away, knowing he's got the shot. Is the master from Melbourne? We'll see. Or well, not a side? If a side would straight on the jack could suit us. Nope. No, just sit alongside <laughs> yeah. it instead for two. Great shot there from Aaron Wilson. He's really showing his class in this game. And 17-6, it's a long road back for Andrew Kelly. I mean, it's never over till it's over, but something's going to need to change, and it's going to need to be quite a dramatic change here, I feel, Kev. Yeah, it certainly does. You know, it's... Um, yeah, it's... Well, it was always going to be, we know, it's a huge challenge up against this guy. It's uh, your last game, so to speak. Um... But, of course, and, and Wilson, important, of course, trying to make redemption, of course, for his Australian, uh, his teammates in the fours, who with New Zealand's victory against the Australia this morning has eliminated that, that Australian side yes. out of semi-final yes, contention. Yes, yeah. it was a dramatic last end. Ray Martin skipped uh, New Zealand four, defeating the Australians. On the penultimate bowl, I think the Australian skip uh, missed his last one, so... Ray Martin played a, a shot to hold the win and Australia unable to salvage with the bowl to come from New Zealand, of course. So they had enough to push the New Zealand fours team into the semi-final and the Australian fours team, that fours team out. Of course, an Australian fours team still in the mix in the fours, Kev. So under the line, because he's going to sit on the bowl. Needs it to hold. Jack clean. Good shot there from Andrew Kelly. This right is good. to the ditch. 
It's good stuff. If you are going to make a comeback, if you are going to get the 17 points... You've got to change things around, Alex. This and is the stuff, it. you know. It's and uh, sits right on the ditch board as well. So here's w Wilson trying to get to the jack or that or the Kelly Bowl, going past both. That's what he was playing for. So Are you drawing the jack into well, the ditch here? I was going to say, if you're Andrew Kelly, do you play the other hand now and get a touch on yeah. the jack and try and... Uh, well, you have to be up to count. So yeah. if you get the jack on the forehand... That's a bonus, isn't it? You may as well. Trailing by 17 to 6. Needs to come down past this bowl of Wilson's and will do so and will count there. That's a great view from our camera people. Tamara and Sierra right over the top of that. Yeah, lovely stuff. Thank you. And looking for the jack is the Australian. He's stalking it down. Is it going to just dip away? It was on that line. Or I'll draw the shot instead. No, he doesn't. Bowl, or has, he, has he got the shot? So Must be close to the shot bowl at 10 o'clock yeah, on the I'm screen. Just, I didn't quite see what the marker indicated there. So Kelly. Bowl or Jack, you'd think, on the Bowl or Jack, side. definitely. Trailing 17 to 6. And on just the about drive. shipping away. Bowler, Bowler Jack's a good result. I don't think we've got one of his own. Well, if that was the toucher bowl, then that's fine. Well, one of them's a toucher one bowl. One of them's definitely a toucher. Oh, he's left one in. So it's still, yeah, you're right, uh, Kev. He hasn't really made it worse. It's no, he just has, about has making not. sure you get your second one. Was he honest forehand or his backhand? You'd think I'm backhand, sure. wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. So this bowl here, because... Andrew's got a chance. Andrew Kelly, I know it's a difficult chance, but he's actually got a chance of a three. Oh, and he'll go for it. Uh, getting down to that bowl or the jack. Uh, Wilson will be determined to get another he's bowl. He's on a tight line. He's definitely on a tight line, but is it getting to the jack? Is it getting to the jack? Is it getting to the jack? No, it's not. Now, here I think is almost New Zealand's last chance. Oh, you've got to play to for the three real shots. have a real, op real opportunity here. Uh, Got to be playing for that. On that the back end side. Jack the bowl. Three shots. Is he on his... I can't tell what hands he's on. His, his feet, he's doing a Kelvin Scott on me, Kev. Yeah, he can, is doing a Kelvin <laughs> Scott. You're quite right, I can't right, tell mate. what hand he's playing. So on the forehand I'm side. Trying to get down to... Big bowl here from Andrew Kelly. He close. Cannot be close. far away. Got it. Two shots. Great shot there well played, from Andrew, Andrew Kelly. Kelly. Great recovery shot. Aaron Wilson quickly acknowledging the two shots. A great shot then. After after uh, moving the jack, goes to 17 shots to eight to Australia. Of course, race to 21. And as Alex uh, spoke about before, even though New Zealand don't win this match, which we know is a big challenge, but if they can get to a certain number based on differentials, uh, we can still see New Zealand get through to the players. But we'll leave get, that. Yeah. To, we'll leave that to the number crunches in the back room. Yeah, it's not me, <laughs> but we think we think about 17. If we can get to about 17 points, as long as the other games are close. But I was just going to say, what about other games that are going well, that's on? The yeah, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing. So you know, that. to keep it simple, if New Zealand wins, uh, they're through the semi-final. That would be great. And Andrew Kelly doing everything right here to try and stage a comeback against a. a a very informed Aaron Wilson. Who is already through to the semi finals. Yes. So Andrew on the back end. Oh, oh, this, is this, first bowl of, this is his first bowl effect and it's that we were we we're talking about uh, Alex. Sure he'll finish Jack level, but it's still leaving a meter for the master. Wilson. Double gold medalist at the Commonwealth Games. 2018, 2022. Won the gold, of course, here on the Gold Coast for Australia. And then repeated that as well in the UK this year. Or last year, sorry, where he won at Leamington on Spa, where he won the singles for Australia. Kelly on the back end. Needs to build on what he played that last year and so well. This is tracking well towards the centre line. Needs to sit on the bowl or draw inside it. Going to do so. Just one bowl lower the jack. That's a shot. Well played, Andrew Kelly. The ITO. Oh, he's calling it a measure. Oh. Not brave enough to tell us who's holding the shot. Oh, I'm looking out the window and I'm pretty sure I know who's got the shot. It's not blue. Well, but I have an update. I have an update, uh, Kev, 
from uh, the number cruncher and uh, chess master, <laughs> Mark Noble. Ireland won 21-5. Uh, so Andrew needs to get to 20 oh. or to 21. <laughs> uh, so we'll take either 20 or 21 and be fine. So that's the update. New Zealand needs to win this game by one or, well, win it by more than one or lose it by one and we're okay. We've got to believe the chess master. Thanks, Mark. That's actually not the, it's not even close to the news I was hoping to hear. <laughs> Andrew Kelly, look at this. That's a great oh, shot. Well, he got the back bowl, I'm turned his own bowl out. Unlucky not to square through, to be honest. Well, the big thing for Kelly, stay in the match as long as you can. That's the, that's, that's the, the big thing. So we're going to see weight here. There, yeah, we're going to see weight here from <laughs> Wilson asking straight away, what's the story with seconds on the head attacking the Andrew Kelly bowl, trying to get down to the bowl or jack. Just, he's close. He's got he's, it. He's, got, he's it. got it. He's got it clean. Oh, and, he doesn't got it. And our bowl stayed inside there. That's well, a miracle. goodness. That, you don't see that very often. I thought the jack was going to clearly move its way back towards the ditch. So Not to be. If we look at this head, New Zealand's holding one. And we've got third and fourth shot. Does Andrew Kelly just play through the blue bowl? Or is it too is that too spaced out? There's not too much room here for I'm Aaron not sure. This is... Marker, he, he just chalked the Kelly bowl. Did he chalk a Kelly bowl? The one over here, he, uh, over the far side. Okay. Oh, well, of course, he did touch it, didn't he, on the way through? Did um, the Aaron Wilson bowl, did he? Yeah. yeah. So. I think Andrew Kelly here is looking to see how many it's worth, that blue bowl. Well, is it three? I'm looking through the window here, and I can just see the angle through the. Our TV monitors, and I can just see the green. Here we go. This is beautiful camera angle here. So it's one. The sh the shot bowl. Andrew Kelly's at three o'clock. Is the shot, and it's a measure between the blue bowl at what's that? So it's a four shot eight. chance. Yeah, I'd go through the blue bowl. I think that's what he's going to do. Play through sit through the blue bowl. That's definitely a four shot chance through the through the bowl. Of course. Just see if Andrew. Well, we don't, so Mike Carroll now talking. What's actually to, going on here? Well, <laughs> seems to be lots it's, of well the, the, it's quite safe playing the shot as well, Alex, because it's a bowl. I'm looking at the window now. It's half a bowl. It is half a bowl jack high. So there's no problem in playing down to the bowl. The, the door doesn't open very often. And there's a chance here of three or four yeah. for, for Andrew Kelly. The door's open. And here you can see what Andrew has seen. And there is, of course, a bowl to come from Aaron Wilson. But you may as well sit with the four and just say, look, I'm holding four shots. If you're good enough to, to get the shot off me, well done. Uh, I, I think we'll see him play that. It's just whether he plays, I suppose, to stay away for four look, or just removes the bowl for three. Sooner or later, you've got to say, I can play this shot, let him try and play mm. it, and he may not play mm. it. So... Right, yeah. Well, we'll find out in a second anyway. Or we we'll just Kev. take that bowl out of Aaron Wilson's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Get one of the uh, Bowls New Zealand staff to tackle him. So, here's a scoring chance. Holding the shot is Andrew Kelly. And I p still feel, just looking at the head, yeah, it's the right hand he's hit heading to, in my view. If he yeah, under the forehand, playing through the bowl, which is half a bowl, jack high. That being the Aaron Wilson bowl. What yeah. way do you plan it with Andrew? Now, when's it going to come back? He's given it every chance to come it's back. Got every chance, but it's every wide chance. of the target. Every Is chance to come back. Target. And great effort. That was a shot to play, all right. Still holding the shot, remembering, though, is New Zealand. A word not fit for commentary just about came out of my mouth then, Kev. Well, what on a measure that it is now, so... Will Wilson just go for the jack trail? Yes, that's what he's going for straight away. Jack or bowl. It's trying to hold. It's trying to hold. Passed. And it has held. I New Zealand continues to chip away here. Well, I thought, looking out the window from here, I thought it was two shots. The marker... Shall I put two on the scoreboard then, well, Kev? Well, the marker, <laughs> who you know his name... <laughs> John. <laughs> ...said one in a measure, so... I've got to go with uh, the marker. He's far closer to the action than, than I am, just oh. looking out the window. Oh, we'll take the two, because that would be good for New Zealand. Remembering, of course. Did he uh, concede the see. two? Ah, uh, just, just the, the one. one. 
So not quite in double figures yet, the New Zealander. 9-17, and the equation is with the completion of a game, uh, Ireland running out the winners, 21-5. The game needs to be won by New Zealand, or Andrew can get to 20 points and we'd still be through. And he's overthrowing the jack again there, Kev. And some frustration shown in the background by Andrew Kelly, just going for a little walk, a teapot and a, a drink of his water. Yeah, this is just, you know, part of that management at the international level that you just got to sometimes just got to stand up you know, put your shoulders back and say right well that's happened you can't get too emotional about these things and then just start again you know you can sometimes so we see the jack thrown by Aaron Wilson now setting the length it's great to have support there but sometimes too many words can just just take a deep breath relax right now I've got to draw the shot that's really you got to draw the shot whether it's a two metre length or whatever length it is. To stay alive in the match, you've got to draw the shot, don't you? Yeah. And Andrew Kelly on the forehand side here, trying to make a comeback in this game. He's doing well. He's up to nine. Aaron Wilson on 17, and you just wonder, does he have enough time to catch up? Well, Alex, I'll take you back to him. You were commentating with me of one of the yes. great singles matches, weren't you? I was. Where somebody sat on 20 for quite some time. Well, champion they? sat on 20 for quite some time. And there's the jack, or jack touch. Now, that's ironical. Did it move? Did it touch? I'm not sure. He must, if it didn't, it must have been very, very close. It looked to be a jack, just a, a shade, a touch on the jack. So... You know, the good thing is in the race to 21, you never run out of ends. You just simply run out of numbers. And, you know, whilst you're there, while you've got four bowls, you're still there with a chance. Big thank you, of course, again to Tamara and Sarah, the the geniuses behind all this, the ladies who are doing geniuses. all the work. They are, they're geniuses, okay. yeah. They're do, on the cameras doing all the wonderful work that they do. And they're the people that bring you this really... We just sit here and talk. <laughs> <laughs> Easier job now. Aaron Wilson there's gone on his back end Well, twice. here's the danger. He's going to look for a four-shot shot opportunity here. Well, that's the clever thing, isn't it? When you look at the weight that these players play with, Aaron's played perfect weight twice, so he's got yeah. two bowls in a catching position now because he hasn't lost his bowl and he had good green. So every bowl he plays is to a bigger number to so score. Andrew here has got to be, if he's half a metre behind and counting, that's fine because it does sort of negate possibly the shot that Wilson's going to play. Needs it to run just a little and bit. That's a very good bowl. That's a there. really good bowl. It's in amongst those two. And sit down. And Brilliant. sits in the middle of the three. But on Look the, at that, Andrew Wilson. It's, it's, it's on its way. He's, cha he's changed his weight straight away. Looking now to sit on the shot bowl of Andrew Kelly's or get the jack neat well or draw the shot. Does he draw it? It falls in. So Andrew Kelly's still got the shot. And he has the uh, market just indicating that he's still got the shot. What was brilliant about Andrew Kelly's last ball is he forced Aaron Wilson into that weight. Changed, See, that, changed that the weight entirely, didn't he? Forced it, by him that to bolt. play just over draw, didn't he, Kev? So reaching. Kelly can safety try, I imagine. He's, I see him closely looking, but if he can sit onto the back bowl, uh, he'll be he'll be happy. As Tamara, that's the biggest drink bottle. That's the biggest water bottle I've, I've seen. <laughs> it's a big bottle. It's not a small bottle. They have got lots of them in Australia, we've discovered. Drink bottles, and I don't, I'm not sure why. Something to do with the heat, I suspect. Andrew Kelly, Marlene Castle there, just having a yawn. It can't be an exciting enough game of singles for Marlene. <laughs> Andrew Kelly on the forehand. Going to be lower the jack and under the line. What then stopped anything? Oh, no, oh, this is right up as... Uh, oh. He knows now. The Will, warning bells Wilson, are ringing. Well, he knows if he's under that line... Those two bowls, he's, but he's right under Morning the line. Morning bells are ringing here. He's passed it. It's gone by. We've escaped a couple of times. So 17, the last 10. Few ends. New Zealand now to double figures. And Andrew Kelly breathing a sigh of relief there. There's been two or three ends in the last little while where Aaron Wilson hasn't quite taken his chances like he was when he was in that red-hot form right at the beginning of the game. And a comeback, a comeback is on the cards here. Now just for the people, always, people always want to note, so today's culinary delights are uh, grapes. Thank you. Candy orange, snaps. Orange, crunchy, chocolate balls. 
uh, shapes and that looks about the lot. So Sierra's very health conscious, obviously. I bought a um, I bought a solid bar of Rockley Road. Oh, Keith. Rockley Road but as well. That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's what the chefs are prepared today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the um, the orange. What did you call them? Orange crunchy orange chocolate crunchy balls. Orange crunchy chocolate balls. Milk chocolate. Daryl Lee. I suspect what happened is Daryl Lee tried to make a Jaffa and couldn't think of a, a catchy name that wasn't. Jaffa, so it's just Trademark. gone for the Trademark. yeah, they've just gone for the descriptor there, and they are actually they're quite nice. I was impressed. Andrew Kelly just Touch sticking on the, the jack. jack goes by by about a meter, playing up towards the clubhouse end here. As all the New Zealand side, the men and ladies, all sitting ringside here, urging on, supporting Andrew Kelly. Great to see, outstanding to see, what I would say a very united New Zealand squad oh, here just at, at, at Broadbeach. The entire well, squad has just got a very good vibe, really. And all the way it's through uh, from the support staff and, and athletes, Kev. Pleasing to see the uh, the team all unified to uh, their, their endeavouring to get their ultimate results. Of course, here's Kelly trying to get to the jack close. to shop. He's off. close here. Not the hog, not the gap, got a touch. Falls back off the centre line. And there's, there's there's what we we're talking about, Kev, on the screen. The New Zealand team lining up in support. Oh, they've, they've imposed as well. I think some good, what I would say, self team discipline within their their, their team etiquette here, and I think that's also uh, very positive as well for the New Zealand side, and just helps I think that whole unification, I would call it, of uh, the New Zealand squad and uh, it's great to see. Here's Andrew Kelly on the backhand. As the lonesome figure of Mike Kernahan comes to support Andrew Kelly wandering around the back of the green. He's close here, Andrew Kelly. Line to the jack, needs to stop now oh. and Needs well, to sit down. It could be shot. God, it's a well played bowl. Well, I think he has got the shot there. One down is the call. I think that's what the marker indicated. It looked like it. <laughs> Look at that. I thought Aaron Wilson was going for a walk, but no, he's delivered the bowl. He's just walking after it. Well, he's certainly out on a wider line. Yeah, Sits Wilson. his own out. It's good for New Zealand. I can assure you, he just goes by. It could have left New Zealand line clearly that's two it. shots if he sat inside the bowl. If Andrew can hold on here. You can just almost feel the dynamics of this game changing, Kev. The momentum of this game switching around. If Andrew can just hold on for this end, he's got a bowl left, and so does Aaron Wilson. Well, he's certainly fighting all the way to and that uh, 21 number. And Aaron's still close, but he's starting to miss. He's starting to miss not by much, but just by that bowl's width, half a bowl's width. That's well, all you need to miss uh, by. Interesting, Alex, that he's actually... He's actually missed two on the wide side, mm. which is something you don't very often see uh, with Aaron Wilson because he's normally playing inside the line. Here's Kelly on the back end, holding the shot. How far is this going to hold? It's going to hold up to the centre. Needs it to hold. Needs it to hold. Stop now. Will it goes by oh. now? Sit now. It'll be interesting to see after this bowl of Wilson's. I'm going to call a shot here in but a moment. Depending on this bowl of oh. oh, they're all gone. So we can't. Sorry, there's not going to be anything else. Did we drop a point before? Oh, he's played his bowl. He's played his bowl. <laughs> it's like, what's going on? I can't have missed it. Goes through the gap, and another one to New Zealand. Oh, Aaron Wilson's getting faster. Andrew Kelly getting slower. There's one to it's New Zealand. Going to be one to New Zealand here. The comeback's on, Kev. 17-11 in this race to 21. Could be the greatest comeback since Oracle and Team New Zealand in process here. Oh, that brings back bad, bad memories for it New Zealand, does, doesn't yeah, it, Oracle? It does, yeah. So, interesting. Let's see what length Andrew Kelly's yeah, he's going back to. Is it going to stay up all the way? Is it going to stay up? Because he's definitely wanting a two-metre jack. It's the jack to stop. It has. And it did. I was going to say, Mike Kernahan will be watching on and going, jack throwing drills. <laughs> yes. Jack, throwing drills are very important, well, but now, it stops, well, so it's okay. The, the important thing now, though, for Andrew Kelly is he's, uh, he's decided the length. He's now got to own the length because you know very well that uh, Aaron Wilson will be searching for movement pretty early on. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly very impressed with this comeback here from Andrew Kelly. It is interesting. It's intriguing to watch. I think if we were timing Aaron Wilson, he's getting faster as it goes on. And he's missed. I mean, when I say he's missing, he's within a bowl. He's still right on the target area. Kev, he's not playing badly by any means. I know he's a bowl but away from the target. As we see, Kelly now is going to finish Jack Level. Getting faster and missing more if this momentum can keep going. Andrew Kelly's won the last three or four ends in a row. It's a chance here. Let's come back. It's a chance. Aaron Wilson on the back end. Well, we'll see how long this holds to that line because it'll start to move now. And whether it moves past the jack, no, moves right to the middle of the jack. That's a good shot there. That's and class. And that's about that first bowl effectiveness. Uh, Absolute Alex. class from Aaron Wilson. So, nine inches uh, off the jack, <laughs> really. Maybe he hit the six upside down. He did. So, Kelly on the mat. On the forehand side. Really don't want Aaron Wilson to score again. If you're Andrew Kelly, you'll be thinking 21-17 would be pretty cool. Although slightly unrealistic, but trying to score on this end too. He's got the right line, Kev. This is not far away here for Andrew Kelly. This is a great attempt from Kelly. Just going to go by, but it will hold up towards the ditch. Stays up. It certainly does. And there's nothing wrong with that weight. That's fine to play with that weight because you actually playing with that weight. You're playing with result weight mm. as well. You know, you can get the bowl or jack with that result weight. And Wilson here is going to slip by. Hanging around enough for two, though, there, Kev. Well, the target yeah, is two there. See the marker clearly indicating it is two. If Andrew Kelly can get to that second shot bowl of Wilson's, he would actually be under the head straight he's away. Tight here. Steered it under the line. He'll be disappointed with that. Yeah. Oh, he's done so much work he's, to get himself back to 11. He doesn't teapot it, but he's certainly. He knows he's Kelly, very, very deliberate player as Andrew Kelly. As you watch Aaron Wilson holding two with his third bowl. It's certainly on the wider side. He's not going to leave any lean twos for Kelly. And that more than likely counts as well. We'll see what the marker indicates. Yes, it does. It's three shots. I think really, though, Alex, he's still got to get that mindset. My target is just inside my own Bowl. I'm playing with weight back to the ditch. The psychology here is that Australia's on 17 points and holding three with the bowl in hand. You're right, Kev. He does need to just uh, get himself settled. This is the biggest bowl Andrew Kelly's going to play in this game. Well, it was, I think it's very good that he walked up the head and had a look. Just yeah, get, you, know, you can just get the mindset. I know what I have to do. I know with the area that I've got to be in. Um, and, and I think that he's got to play really under his own, be confident, play under his own, get to the jack, he's got the two deepest bowls on the green, Andrew Kelly, three down, trailing, 17-11, on the mat as a New Zealander, with the Somerset shirt on, the silver fern on his cap, emblazoned, number 105, here he is, looking to get down to the jack, but here's that danger line, is it... Is it going to hold that weight? Is it going to hold? Need some luck? No. It's I would suggest this game has about 20 seconds of life left in it. Kevin, and but for Miracle, it's going to be a 21-11 victory to Aaron Wilson. Andrew Kelly fought so hard to get to 11 points. I think the lesson there really... What a disappointing way well, to lose a game. I think the lesson there, Alex, is that the weight that Andrew played then is a difficult weight to control to get a result. But that's where here I we go. Through. Is it the last bowl of this match? Looking for four here, Aaron Wilson, looking to win this match. And I think he's done it there, Kev. And we see... He's yeah, there getting it on. Bowl. There it is, seven from seven. And uh, Aaron Wilson from Australia safely through to the semi-final, defeating Andrew Kelly of New Zealand by 21 shots to 11.
which we're fairly sure, well, we know that now we won't see a New Zealander uh, uh, in the men in the semi-finals of the singles, but of course uh, we'll be back later on this afternoon with further live action, either that of the women's pairs, women's triples or the women's fours as they play the semi-finals here uh, at the multinationals uh, bowls event uh, on the Gold Coast. And from the Broad Beach Bowling Club and I'll leave it to Alex to close things up and we'll be back later on this afternoon. Yes, thanks Kev. Yeah, so we see there just to confirm uh, that New Zealand is uh, hopes of a single semi-final scuppered by an informer Aaron Wilson 21-11 and we will be back at about 2.45pm we think about a quarter to three Australian time so add three hours to that if you're in New Zealand. So what's that? Tea time. Yeah, about tea time. <laughs> Just before dinner, if you're in New Zealand, to watch either the semi final of the men's fours or the women's triples. Uh, so until then, sit back, relax, and enjoy some highlights of that game.
And hello and welcome back to the Bowls New Zealand coverage of the 2023 Multi-Nations broadcasting live from the Broad Beach Bowling Club and we're getting down to the point here now. My name is Alex Reid, I'm joined by Kevin Hicklin and Kevin, can you talk us through what game are we live streaming this afternoon? So we'll be live streaming that of the women's triples match, that's the New Zealand side. The New Zealand side of course of Val Smith, Nicole Toomey and Leanne Paulson up against the Australian combination Natasha Van Eldick, Lindsay Clark and Kylie Whitehead. They're uh, right out in front of us here and we'll be live streaming that match. Also, of course, we've got the uh, women's peers. They're also out on this front green, I assume, or they're on the other side green. And also in the men's fours side, they're up against, uh, they're up against China, uh, Hong Kong, China, in their semi-final. And we'll keep you updated uh, on progress of those semi-finals, which are just getting underway here at the Broad Beach Club here uh, on the very sunny Gold Coast. Yeah, certainly looking forward to it as we join this uh, triple semi-final on the first end. They had their two trial ends, and we see this bowl here of Australia just cutting underneath it. Where's the jack, Kev? Well, great start for New Zealand because the jack is locked away. There's two Liam Paulson oh, balls sitting there, <laughs> sitting one just in behind and one just lower the jack. Great start from the New Zealand combination. Nicole Toomey of Wellington playing number two here in this uh, triples combination. And obviously this triple side, this combination gone pretty well right throughout. As we watch the Toomey bowl break into the That's a head. great shot there from and Nicole Toomey. That's well played. And the good thing is it's just a bowl over the head as well. Of course, up against Natasha Van Eldick, very experienced uh, Australian skip. Lindsay Clark, goodness gracious, what a, no, no introduction. Cap number 62 for Australia, been around a long time. You can see with the four stars on her cap, she's played at least 400 games for Australia. A long time. And of course, the league, Kylie Whitehead. Uh, uh, from uh, took up bowls from Wodonga, won the 2019 Champion of Champions and beat Debbie White in the yes, final yes. of the uh, of the World Champion of Champions singles, and uh, has played over a hundred games for Victoria. But for those who don't know uh, where the Wodonga is, it sits right on the Victoria New South Wales uh, border, right on the Murray River, on the Twin Cities, Albury Wodonga. One side of the river, of course, is Victoria. The other side is New South Wales, and that's where uh, Kylie Whitehead, uh, that's where she started her bowling career. And there's a great start for New Zealand in this 15-end uh, semi-final. 18 ends, I think it oh, is. Oh, 18 ends. Yeah. Sorry, goodness the, gracious. I, we get even, we get three more ends of uh, high quality we bowls. Do. Of course, from New Zealand point of view, if it's over after 15 ends, that's pretty good news uh, for the New Zealand team. Has Val Smith on her forehand side, another very experienced bowler, and what a great start by the New Zealand team. If we look, the bowl at 12 and 6 o'clock is Leanne Paulson's. Uh, Nicole Toomey had perfect green, corrected with her second one, and Val Smith here drawing. A fourth counts. shot. This is good stuff here from the New Zealand team. A good start to the semi final. A very attacking player is Natasha Van Eldick. Very, very experienced player. Won world titles, Commonwealth Games. And very, very experienced. Looks as though certainly not going to be. I don't think she's going to be short coming down on her forehand, trying to play down to this nest of bowls, the four counting bowls of New Zealand. Is it going to work back towards the centre line it's or holding. stay outside? And is going to just stay outside. This could be a great opening for New Zealand. It's getting in, exciting in already, isn't it? Holding the four. Do you make it five? You just stack it up for five and go, well, let's just see what happens here. Against Australia, well, it's like holding four or five on yeah. the last end. <laughs> <laughs> we all know they're very tenacious competitors. Great for New Zealand. We've got uh, both of our women's combinations are qualified for the semi final and the men who started off pretty rough, so to speak, on said day in the fours. Good bowl here from Val Smith. And will count. Yeah, great shot. And gets behind. Now that's five. Do they attack? What a start here from the New Zealand team. If they can hold on to this on this first end. So Van Eldick will play down on her forehand. She'll certainly be wanting to reach it with weight. And has brought her line in. Now I think she's, she's on a better line here as Van Eldick. She, but she's going That's to genius. get well what played. What a shot there. From two to New Zealand, but a great eight, a great bowl there from Natasha Van Elder. But most importantly for the New Zealand combination, a very, very good consistent start with all three players getting bowls, Alex, right in around the head, 
perfect conditions out here uh, at Broad Beach. Temperature hitting just on 30 degrees, so it's, uh, it's certainly not cold it's out there. It's not cold, it's no. It's not cold, for sure. And very, very little breeze here, playing up towards the clubhouse here at uh, Broad Beach. But certainly, if you, do, if you can't get confidence from putting five bowls within a couple of feet of the jack on the first day, and I don't know what you can get confidence from, Kev, that's a, a good start from the New Zealand team in the semi-final. Obviously, they've played their section play games over the last how many days we've been here. It three, feels like a while, three days, the yeah. last three days or so, found themselves in the semi-final against Australia Green, which of course is why the score tick on the top left is green. It's the Australia Green team against the New Zealand team. Oh, wait, our colours, is it yellow, is it? I'm colour blind. I thought I was doing well there. <laughs> I just think we say Australia. That's, that's disappointing. Australia, yeah, the that's Australian team with the yellow. Yeah. So well, it's inter yeah, there's, uh, both Australian sides have obviously qualified in the semi-finals. The next one along next door. That's oh, look at this uh, from Kylie White here. That's a good shot. A good reaching first ball, really, isn't it, Kevin? And indicative of good, a good line that she took there. And ran into the jack with a bit of pace mm -hmm. on the way through. And in that other semi-final, it is Australia versus South Africa in the other semi-final. In the other semi-final in the men's fours, it is Australia playing Queensland, and of course we know New Zealand playing uh, China, Hong Kong, China. Who New Zealand played earlier, of course, on Saturday and got defeated. But in saying that, Alex, from those two defeats uh, on Saturday, the New Zealand fours, the men's fours, have been uh, faultless, really, haven't they? They've uh, won every game since then. Oh, absolutely, and it's interesting to see the. Uh the difference too because we saw the Queensland of course they started with three wins in the fours then had three losses on the second day and then finished with the win against uh, Hong Kong well <laughs> they were the team that never wanted, yesterday didn't want to play the last it end in any one of their games because mm. they dropped a three or four mm. I, I think a five or four and a three or something so the last end wasn't favourable to them as we watched Nicole Toomey with its Australian bowl in front of the jack lower the jack of Kylie Whitehead's which is shot Nicole Toomey out of the Wellington Club out of the Wellington Centre just trying to get down now needs to get in front just just more than likely it is shot I see Val Smith just indicating there that it is shot of course we've got Val Smith of course black cap number 37 played going into this event played 632 games for New Zealand Oh, good try there from the Australian. And another bowl just to plug in. <clears throat> Val Smith, of course, made her debut in the uh, Asia Pacifics way back in 2003. So uh, a long time ago and uh, has been a consistent member of the New Zealand side since then, thus gathering 632 caps. Nicole Toomey. Blackjack number 58, another good ball here. That's drawing in behind the jack. Played 21 matches for New Zealand and made her debut in 2022 in the Trans-Tasman. I think that was the one that we played up in the mountains somewhere here and uh, somewhere. <laughs> played somewhere <laughs> up here. And looking for the bowlers, Clark. And again, see, we're saying, is this... Following this Australian trend, Alex, where they're always searching to the jack. Mm. They're always searching that metre, always. And that just, um, you know, that's what makes them such a difficult opponent. Absolutely. So New Zealand there, you can see, and look at the stickers, that's going to be more helpful than the bowls, but the black sticker bowl of Nicole Toomey's holding the shot as the players make their way down to the delivery end. And Val Smith here with her first bolt, looking to solidify, see if she can make it a two, score a two on the first end. A good hit it was as well. Talking to Val Smith earlier on today, she just remarked that today for some reason she's just having a bit of trouble get, get her consistent weight. But I personally feel that once you get in these big matches like this, Alex, you soon... You know, you soon get the feel of it. And the muscle memory kicks in, doesn't it? Because Val's, oh, absolutely. Val's played so many uh, 632 big before. matches in her career. Just World champion, you know, dual, you know, 
won everything over the over her tenure within the New Zealand side, and uh, certainly a linchpin in the New Zealand side. The New Zealand peer, women's peers combination for those who uh, it is Caitlin Inch and Selena Goddard, and they're down on the front green down here at, at Broad Beach. And they're taking on uh, Jamie Lee Warsnop and Dawn Heyman, who are part of the Australia green team, because yeah. there's a green and a yellow. Dawn Heyman out of New South Wales, very strong performer, and Jamie Warship, of course, the, the wife of, uh, of Aaron Wilson, and very good player in her own right as we watch the Smith Bowl. Looks as though it's just going to hang a wee bit on the wide side. And, uh, it's slightly over with weight, Alex, but that's not bad actually. You know, I'd rather be trying to, I'd rather be trying to adjust weight throughout the game back rather than off the, you know, trying to adjust that meter, meter and a half of, of being short. Just easier to get it, it back there. Gal Melrose sitting there, that one of the New Zealand management team, with no doubt doing one of those technical things way above my mental, my capacity. <laughs> that, that's it. Here we go, the Australian skip. Van Eldert trying to get up to the shot bowl. This is close. Not That's gonna classy. Run it. Not That's gonna run class. it. Gets all the way. Maybe don't it's not. know. Don't know. <laughs> out comes the measure. Nicole, don't. Uh, one and a half or half each. <laughs> we'll find out soon enough. So Here's something I'm going to say, Alex. Right? I would much rather see the New Zealand team measure straight away rather than do this. Oh, I've never understood the finger the, measure. The, the fingering thing. But a lot of people seem to use the yeah, finger measure. I so. just feel at this level of bowls, Alex, and you're playing, you just don't give anything away. You just... So what happened there? Was it one we saw? Oh, yes, one, two, Australia there. So two, one. Now the score after two ends. There was a case right there, as an example, Lindsay Clark, before the measure, had indicated that she thought Australia were one down. Mm. That's why you use the measure. Mm. Yeah, fin yeah. The fingers were made to hold the balls. <laughs> yeah, I don't disagree. I've never understood it. But enough people seem to do it that there must be something to it, uh, Kev, that I just don't understand. Mind you, you could go the other way, Alex, as we saw yesterday, which I could get completely confused about <laughs> that machinery-like <laughs> measuring devices. Oh, that there's they so many <laughs> different ways you can measure. Just use your, use your tape. Kylie Whitehead. Now, look at this. A very, very short end. Certainly, yeah. Uh, they've, they've certainly shortened it up, Australia, straight away, going to... Interesting. You wouldn't expect, if you were asked to pick, you know, which, which country would prefer the shorter ends out of Australia and New Zealand on a slower green, you would think it would be New Zealand. You know, Absolute, you absolutely. No, no question about that. Australia's well known, you know, for their two-to-two. Way of playing the game, and Nicole Pol uh, Leanne Paulson just going to draw, just lower the jack. It'll be the shot on her backhand. Is Kylie Whitehead nice delivery in this bowl? Not far away. Just got to get needs past. to clear the front one, and got the generous feather and make shot of it. A good bowl, really, and now the decision. As to whether Leanne stays on the back end to go past or draws the shot on her forehand side. Probably will stay on the back end. Because she, she played a good first ball on the back end, so you may as well play a very similar ball again. Instead of having to start from scratch, Leanne Paulson does a lot of training, puts a lot of hours into her sport. Very grooved delivery. And looks as though it's going to have failed to hold under the line. Might get a nice little slide here, will it? Yes, it does. Gets a slide to the jack, I can tell you that in the men's fours. New Zealand up against Hong Kong, China. It was New Zealand that opened up on the first end, scoring a single on the first end. That's the New Zealand team of Raymond Martin skipping. Lance Pascoe at three, Chris Leave at two, and Tony Grantham leading as we watch the bowl of Lindsay Clark, another who has uh, played hundreds of games, of course, as we just said a moment ago. Uh, for Australia, like, like uh, Val Smith has for New Zealand. And Nicole Toomey here on the forehand side. Part of that whole generation, really, in the in the women's team that came through together through development teams and regional age group stuff. Nicole, look at this little feather. That's it's a, a feather. That's a it's lovely a bowl. feather to the jack. It was slightly under the line, but had dead draw weight, so got that nice feather to the jack. You can see there. 
on the camera, just a few inches low of the jack. Anything here now is New Zealand doesn't have amazing position yet. You see they've got uh, three bowls shy of the jack, so Australia can afford just to pop it back. Look at this. It's going to be like a little snooker shot. That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful and bowl. And well played by Lindsay Clark. Rested in between the, as you say, got onto the bowls, Alex, and there's the Australian bowl sitting in behind. And an interesting thing here, Alex, just to see these multicoloured bowls. When they get to the World Championship comes September, they'll be red and blue. Blue. Yep. Red, red and blue. A really good call, I think, from World Bowls to dictate that because for television coverage, it makes it so much easier, particularly with the 10 games and triples and fours. So what happens when two blue teams play one another? They'll have red. <laughs> so the, yeah, the top of the drawer is red and the bottom of the drawer is well, blue. Well, I'll be old-fashioned. Never take the tools of a tradesperson. <laughs> there you go. Uh, fair enough. All about the broadcast, Kev. I understand that, but, you know, um, yeah, I'm one for never take the tools away. <laughs> I think there will be a pretty wide variety. I mean, to be fair, I think there's a wide variety of models oh, absolutely. available. Oh, absolutely there Although is. Although I get what you're saying. You know, you get quite attached to your own uh, your own set of bowls, but they'll, they'll be given choices to, to pick what they want. Well, talk about... Same Maybe change if it's not working. Talk about the same sets of bowls. Chris Leave, who's out here playing for New Zealand, is playing with exactly the same set of bowls that he started his bowls with many, many, many years ago back in New Zealand. Has never, ever changed them. Really? Absolutely. He's won <laughs> New Zealand titles with them, won three Queensland titles, never, ever changed his bowls. Playing with exactly the same bowls. Oh, if it works, why not? Just we might have to, if he gets his yellow team, paint him red or something. I was going to say paint them blue or <laughs> red, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, dear. So what have we missed? Is uh, uh, Smith here on the forehand side looking to cannon through the short bowl. She's close here. Val Smith close looking to, to punch the bowl. The bowl. Well Beautiful played. shot. Magnificently controlled weight to get to the bowl. Turn it through the head for one. That was a difficult shot to play through that narrow line down to get to where that counting area Got it cleanly. Beautiful there from Valsmith. She couldn't have played that any better. And she's got a bowl on hand too. You have to assume that Natasha's going to play an effective shot here on the forehand side. Trying to get to the bowl or Jack is Van Eldick. Not a feather on the way through, no. Mm. Bonus Misses. time. Misses. I'm sure Val Smith with this second bowl will change her hand. Yes, she will be going to that backhand side to draw down to that op open side. Just asking Lindsay Clark just to move a fraction inside the uh, inside the line. Oh, how many times have Lindsay and Val faced each other, Kev? A lot. It's careers that have spanned similar lengths of time. Val Smith on the backhand. Careful, Val. Be careful. Oh, she's Be under careful, the, Val. Doesn't want to get this blue clean. Got a feather off It's fine. Off Don't it, panic, team. It's, it's okay. But was under the line. And it was New Zealand who scored Wait, again on that okay. deep. Third end. Oh. <laughs> if I'm like this in the semi final, Kevin, I'm not sure how I'm going to cope when a New Zealand team makes a final this week. One of the well, Alex, one of the things that playing on these speed greens, of course, is that you know, if Val had played that same, got that same weight line on a New Zealand green, more than likely would have been one down. But because of the speed of the green here, yeah. the bowl on the draw weight doesn't move as it, like it doesn't move as far. So the energy doesn't pass as cleanly through, does it? Because no, no, the it surface doesn't. is more spongy, so no, there's, uh, the energy sort of goes into the ground as as well as through the bowl, which we can all be grateful for. We see the jack there thrown a longer length again, so it does seem at this early stage like New Zealand's going to favour the longer ends and uh, Australia favour the shorter ones. As you're quite right, uh, Alex, is a wee bit of a reverse of what we would uh, expect. So here is Leanne Paulson. Here's the weight to get down to the jack. No, uh, you know, like, the danger for New Zealand is that we, this might sound pedantic, Alex, is that we, we use the jack as where our weight line needs to be. And our weight line must be 
our visualization weight line's got to be a meter behind because we will open the door all the time, which we've just seen here straight away yeah, good from Kylie Whitehead, and we and we start to early clutter clutter a hand with the meter short bowls. And so Leanne Polson now looking to make amends for her first bowl came out very smooth there. And got the bowl out on a wider line, I can tell you, in the men's fours, two ends gone. It is at New Zealand v China, uh, Hong Kong China, and it's New Zealand leading 3-0 after two ends. Came out too smooth for Leanne Polson there. I think it's probably just about the first bowl she will have thrown in the ditch in the entire competition. So Kylie Whitehead from Wodonga. Another good line bowl will just go by by a metre, and that's, as you well know, Alex, as well, two bowl triples, can't waste bowls. That's a very stressful game. <laughs> you just can't <laughs> waste bowls. That's, that's, you know. You're fine with two bowl triples, too. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty brutal game. You can blink and you'll drop a four or five. No worries. And this end, uh, under the line. This end is uh, beginning to get a bit scratchy for the New Zealand uh, team. Well, steering under the line, Nicole Toomey, get the bowl out on that. As we keep saying, Alex, get the bowl out on that wider line so we get that arc back all the way back to that centre line. Lindsay Clark now on the back end, holding the shot. That's the bowl of Kylie Whitehead just in behind the jack. And Natasha Van Elder looking closely at this bowl as it breaks towards the head. Hopeful for New Zealand. It sits literally jack level, which is just a good line to the... So there's a good line now for Nicole Toomey to play down inside the yellow bowl, which would get her line directly into the jack. On the back end. Uh, <clears throat> under the line again. It's called jack searching. Yeah, disappointing there. Two bowls, very similar. Very similar bowls. And Australia to consolidate here. Yeah, I mean, it's early days. It's 3-1 the score to the New Zealand team. Alex, you know I'm pedantic, pedantic about taking your green, all right? I've noticed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just makes it's it so bowl. much better for you. And it's, it's, we saw two bowls fall over then. The shot bowl of uh, Kylie Whitehead's just tipped over as well. Now, it's not wind, I can assure you, that there's only a zephyr of a breeze here. We're only, well, we're literally about 250 metres from uh, the sea here, right on the right on the coastline here uh, at the, the Gold Coast. Pretty idyllic spot here at uh, Broad Beach. At this four green club. And Val Smith, though, has been in this position before. Won't be worried. I think a lot about uh, triples is having a skip that keeps their composure, Kev, because it's easy to cross over. It'll happen a few times. You're going to cross over in trouble. It's about being able to play those two bowls. Well, the good thing there that's about, good well, that's the good thing about the Val Smith bowl. It finishes jack level, so it's in the zone. It's in the right. It's in the right zone. Sure, we're down on the head at present in this semi-final. And we'll see the very experienced Van Elder plays out of the Raymond Terrace Club in Sydney. And trying to get down to the Val Smith Bowl. Trying to get this down to the shot. Val Smith Bowl. He's going good to get shot. it clean. It's a clean. At my at day three, I would say. The Australians all claps and joy. And well, they don't often need... Uh, <laughs> I won't say that. We'll just watch Val Smith here on the back end. So they can she, sing Walsh and Matilda backwards. <laughs> so she's got, she had good weight with her first bowl. So Val Smith now, just in her mind, will be thinking, well, my weight was good. Just play a similar bowl again, see what happens. No shot play on here for Val Smith. No, just good, about but there is a good lean shot. on the head, though, Val. This is a pretty good line, this bowl from Val Smith. Is it, It's going to hold to the jack, is it? Or hold to second shot, will it? Great bowl. It's well played. It's well played from the New Zealand skip. Was looking at a number down sure. Van Elden's got another bowl left. But the, the thing is about where that Val Smith bowl landed, uh, Alex, it makes it it makes it a more difficult shot to land on the bowl and dislodge and yeah. make those counts. Not a, it's a more yeah, it's a difficult more difficult shot to play. 
It was a really classy ball there from Val, and I think probably why she is skipping in the semi-final. It's just the experience, isn't it? That was an easy end to panic away. Oh, absolutely, because you'd seen th you know, bowls ducking away under the head, and you just got to get your own mindset right that I know where my line's got to be. We're going to get a result. That's what I've got to get to out wider as uh, Natasha Van Elder can I think that it will come all the way back. Trying to work now. The, the Australian girls know it won't come back. And we'll just see what that number was. Was it one? Was it two? I've decided it was one and updated the scoreboard accordingly. We'll see if that matches the actual scoreboard. It does. Val Smith, I see, has just done the scoreboard. And it is. Kylie White here delivering their jack. It's going short. That's fascinating to me that that's their plan. Well, it, it, it it's is. It's really, uh, really it's, interesting it's, call. It certainly is, Alice, because we also know that most Australian sides, they like to own the ditch as well. It's, it, it, it's, yeah. uh, it's almost bamboozling, but there must be. I mean, they, they're they in a semi-final. There's obviously a good reason. They've obviously had a conversation, but just fascinating that it's gone short. You said N Natasha was quite an aggressive bowler, although I suppose, I was just about to say, a short end's easier to kill. But that's not ideal, is it, if you've got a two-metre respot rule? Not really. You don't really want it to be an easier end to kill, so I'm not sure what the logic is here from the Australian team. And I can tell you in the men's fours, that's New Zealand versus uh, Hong Kong, China, and I can tell you that the three ends gone, and New Zealand are now leading by 6 to nil after three ends. You've so got very good eyes, Kev. A good start. Well, I've got some binoculars here. I haven't got them out yet, but I will, all right? Then I'm about to see it clearly. <laughs> and look at this here from well Liam Paulson. Well played Liam Paulson. Brilliant. Draw on the shot. And as we see, Kylie Whitehead, just take your time on the bowl. Delivering the bowl. And there we see where Liam Paulson's bowl ended up at 11 o'clock. Sorry, 1 o'clock to the jack. Kylie sticking to that backhand side. It's a good shot. Well, it gives him a second shot, Jack Lowe, which is, which is fine, which uh, is really what it sort of means is, well, Alex, you're not going to get into too much trouble on the head with having you know, a bowl literally sitting on top. So, you know, it's a pretty good head position. On the backhand, Leanne Paulson needs to get a good result here. That's, that's not the end of the world, really. No, it's not. She was asked to stay on that, that backhand side. Well, the good thing is that she wasn't under the head. She was out to that, you know, to the, the zone where New Zealand ideally you know, want the bowls on the head. And we see Lindsay Clark here on the forehand. Been around for a long time on the Australian scene. And, well, my, and Alex, my binoculars confirm it is 6 0. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. But I can't get down to the woman's peers right down <laughs> on that, in that front green down. You need can't, like a telescopic can't setup there. Can't get, I'd need one of those measures that they've got. They've got telescopes on those they measures. They do, yeah. <laughs> we could just mix it all up. Why not? And Nicole Toomey, look where she's standing on the mat. That's like the reverse of a. So we see some uh, of the Australian uh, players. We saw uh, Aaron Wilson was right at the front of the mat, isn't he? And it sort of verges on a foot fault. There'd be uh, nothing close to a foot fault from Nicole Toomey standing right at the back of the mat. I'd just like to see, though, with Nicole Toomey just to have her bowls ideally finishing on the draw line side of the head rather than, you know, she's played four bowls now where they, and they become difficult to be effective, Alex, as you well know, if they, you know, just drift too far under. Look, Lindsay Clark here trying to get to a Bowl. jack or shot bowl. And, of course, the egg, well, straight away. It's, this is why Val Smith's so good straight away. You can notice is that cover shot. We don't need to worry about trying to score numbers. There's a cover shot down there because there's a jack trail sitting there for Australia uh, for around about three shots. So good to see out on the wider side is uh, Nicole Toomey wanted to break in, inside these bowls. You'll see a yellow, a blue, and a blue and behind there. And that's where... That's where Natasha Van Eldert will be endeavouring to play that jack trail. Yeah. Just, I was talking to Lindsay Clark before the game today, and interesting, uh, even she remarked to me, it's pretty warm. It, well, <laughs> she's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Not it's wrong. It's 30 degrees uh, out there at uh, present. I don't know how they're doing it, to be honest, and I said it before, but I think the New Zealand team, maybe we should wear something different when we come to Australia, because we wear black. Soaks I, the heat up. I was just, <laughs> I funny you say it. that, I was talking this morning, looking for the jack trail here is Van Eldick and just goes 
And I was talking to someone this morning and I was making the thought of my own suggestion to Bowls New Zealand that perhaps we, because years ago we used to play in the white and, and, and black, we played in the white, we played in the white top mm-hmm. with the black, with the silver fern, the black silver fern across the back and the black collar, that's how we, that was sort of one of the older New Zealand uniforms and, and black shorts. Uh, and I just wonder, coming to Broad Beach later on this year for the World Championships, whether it could be a thought for Bowls New Zealand that we go back to the white and, and the big black silver yeah. fern. Well, it uh, just seems like they're just really warm. Or we could just get personal fans. <laughs> <laughs> no, Val Smith and Deborah to get another bowl on the head. Just going to get under the head. But if it sits on the yellow bowl, it just oh, sits jack level. And we have got a bit of a cover bowl in there. Van Elder, a wee bit of a breeze blowing through there. Van Elder will endeavour to get to that trail shot, making her way back to the mat. Now, just taking her time here. Certainly wiping their hands quite vigorously. There's a bit of sweat, moisture. Wasn't far away with the first was Natasha Van Elder trying to get to the jack. With a shot bowl, looks to be on the wide side and is going to go by. And a chance here now for Val Smith to land on one of the, virtually to land on the back of Leanne Paulson bowl would just about count. Yeah. Well, it's one of those heads you certainly don't want to be playing the forehand, Alex, because you don't want to be getting any touch. So it's more than likely a scoring option and safer option. Still undecided. I wonder how many packs of chewing gum Val's gone through in her international career. A lot. And as we thought, going to the backhand, try and sit on the back of that, the impulsive bolt would literally would go close to counting. Just watching this bowl, she's got a clap, waiting for it to turn back into the head. Just well, it makes no difference, but the good thing about that, Alex, it was it stayed on the wide side, the safe side, so we we'll see whether it's one or two for New Zealand. See Leanne just walking out of, out of shot there. Must be going to have a chat to Val about something, goodness knows what. What? Three? Is that three? Three to New Zealand. Oh, I thought it might have been two, but three. Well, that's a great, uh, it's a, a great result to, uh, for, for New Zealand. And then they will jump to, we'll just wait for the board to change. Five ends gone. And it is, it is six three to the New Zealand side. Six two, sorry, after five ends. And the impulse in. No, now we're going to the. Interesting, isn't it? Well, I'm surprised we're actually going to their length. Uh, Alex. I just feel like we're playing to their length and they're playing to ours. Yeah, I just I, I thought we might have felt more comfortable. Well, maybe it's because we've gone, well, we've just scored a three on a short end. That's what that conversation was between Val and Leanne. It's good to have the conversation. Oh, ab- ab- absolutely. It, uh, we'll just see whether, as we talk about that first bowl effectiveness now works in favour for the New Zealanders. Blackjack number 60 is Leanne Polson. Out of the county's Manukau Centre in Auckland. Can also report, Kev, that the pairs, Caitlin and Selena, are five all after five in. So all the fives on that other green. And they're out of playing, our camera site. They're playing Australia. They're playing Australia as well. So some big games going on around the place. And we see Leanne Polson just a little short there with her first bowl. And Natasha Van Eldick endeavouring to try and steer this bowl in. Kylie Whitehead finishes jack level. They're a similar blue pattern to the Aaron Wilson bowls, aren't they? Yes, they do look very similar with the um, the split blues. And Leanne Polson here on the forehand side. Just looking to make that correction from her first bowl. I think she's made that correction, Alex. It comes down towards the jack. It's a good adjustment from the New Zealand player. Finishes just low of the jack. And it's the start you want from your lead, it's for sure. 
Kylie Whitehead. Very smooth delivery. This bowl's got a chance of doing something good, Kev. Look at this. Natasha's looking closely. Just goes by. You can see just how short that end is on that previous camera angle. We could see seeing far in the background on the adjacent rinker a long head so this this end very very short and it means that it, it won't turn quite as much because the bowl isn't traveling as long so it doesn't get as as many opportunities to turn so easy to be wide as we saw well, it needed, and yeah, you're right it needed another yard of weight really didn't it to get itself back to the center line of that back bowl and because we'll be back just in case you're wondering, there's no coverage tomorrow, but we'll be back on deck with live coverage on the Wednesday. Yes. And right through to the completion of this uh, multi-nations event. Uh, and we'll be at Broad Beach, I think. I think it goes uh, Musgrave Hill on Wednesday and then Broad Beach for the rest is my recollection. And I think it is uh, men's pairs and the para men's pairs on on Wednesday from Musgrave Hill, just off the top of my head, legitimately. I usually say that when I'm looking at a screen, but that's what I think it is. We'll run and with that. Yeah, and I'd also encourage anyone watching, and thank you for tuning into our coverage, but if you want to watch more uh, or you want to be notified when we go live for the rest of the multinations, as we watch Lindsay Clark here, is she holding up long enough? Just underneath it's the line. The back of the bowl. I would encourage you, please, to click the subscribe button on the Bowls New Zealand YouTube channel, it's a big red button that says subscribe on it, there's a bell if you could click that, it'd be fantastic and then you'll be notified any time we go live for any of our broadcasts going forward and we would thank you for that and uh, thank you again for tuning in Now a, a reasonably scattered head here, so Val Smith will just pick a hand she's comfortable on as so we hear the Australians have done something good on the next rink against South Africa and Val just deciding here forehand or backhand on the forehand I think and on the forehand she is just looking to add another bowl on this very short end willing it back in now it's just holding that little bit well it's important that we do get another bowl in on the head really Alex, because it just leaves that sit shot there to the one ball target to Natasha Van Elduk. He says, yes, playing with that weight that, <laughs> that weight we know that they like to try and play to get into the jack or yeah. bowl, is it? No, it's not. Just disappears under. and That's why, Alex, I personally feel the other hand to me yeah, correct, Nicole Toomey, is actually a better option because it, it can count on that side and put some cover in as well yep. after Natasha Van Eldig has declared what sort of weight or shot selection that she will play with her. Her second bowl, holding one in New, Ze New Zealand, leading 6-2 as we play in 6 of 18, and that's well done. Nicole Toomey, good direction. She's trying to get down to this. This is these bowls down here. It's Needs an ideal to rest spot. on that one. Good ideal shot, Val Smith. Well, well played. played. Good directions from Nicole Toomey. Just make holders the shot selection uh, for Australia. And we see Natasha still on the forehand side. This has been given a better chance. It's Going still might duck, now. Kev. No, well, I think she took a wider green, but less weight that time in that bowl. Just running out of steam, really, and we're going to see the New Zealand team score again. Absolutely. Was, well, it, a, was it a one or a two, do we think? Oh, I thought it was two. I just thought Val Smith's bowl may well have come into the count where that bowl finished, but we'll see. Certainly one. I think it's just the one. Oh, the board does say 7-2. I can see in the distance, 7-2 after six. So one there to the New Zealand team starting well. And they've, they've started strong, haven't well, they? Well, the good thing, Alex, is interesting, especially playing at this level. Once you've got the shot, you can, you're can sure you can start building the head, but you also protect as well and also cut off. One of the key things is is cutting the shot options off for the, for the opposition. Now, now we, saw, we saw there 
Natasha Van Elder to clear with the weight that she played or what she played with at first, therefore that made an easy decision for New Zealand. Let's get some cover over here. Mm. So and thus she had to change her shot option with her second bowl. And here we see again a, a short end called well, from New Zealand. Isn't it fascinating? And look at this, that's a great ball from the impulse. Yeah, but if your lead knows the way to the jack, the jack that's uh, the link's fine. Well, you isn't know? it interesting psychology? How does Australia feel having gone, well, New Zealand's throwing long ends, so we've made them short. Then they dropped a three. Then New Zealand had a conversation, and now New Zealand's playing the ends that Australia wanted to play and scoring on them. Yeah, well, how, does that, how does that sit with an well, Australian team? I wouldn't... Australia get the jack. I do they throw a short end? I don't think <laughs> they do will they change? be. I don't think they will be. Not while the Ian Paulson's getting that first bowl effectiveness. Yeah. Um, right, literally right on top of the jack because straight away it puts you uh, in a defensive mode. The men's fours, I can tell you now, there's 6-1 to New Zealand uh, versus Hong Kong. 6-1. As we watch this bowl of the Ian Paulson's going to make contact that's all good and good bad job. because it gives a jack level and one in behind and remembering that Leanne's first bowl was a toucher. I mean, you look at that, it's pretty reasonable leading, isn't it? You've got two bowls. Absolutely. Two bowls close, one of them's passed as we see Kylie Whitehead here on the backhand side. That's a good shot too. She's drawn the shot, she's drawn one. The, the door just became open a wee bit, didn't it, with that bowl movement, but that's it's fine. Nicole Toomey now play on her backhand out of the Victoria Club in Wellington. On the backhand side from Nicole Toomey, she's taken a nice line, this bowl. It'll finish in a good place regardless. That's a, that's a good first bowl. It's an easy one to correct from. Well, it is, well, the good thing was it tipped the New Zealand bowl over, so what it means, of course, as well, is the, the, the jack movement, if Nicole Toomey is able to get jack movement, favours New Zealand on draw weight as we see Lindsay Clark trying to get to the jack, sit on the what is the counting bolt we'll, we'll do so, well played Do we see more or less weight here from Nicole Toomey, Kev, what well, would you play, what would you well, call Got to play with the yard of weight yeah, there, the Val Smith straight away saying let's play with the yard of weight through, the, through those bowls even when I get the shot, Alex, if you move some bowls around it just you know, it just, just makes it, it, it better, so here is Nicole Toomey on her backhand, trying to get down to the, the jack. Needs it to hold here, Nicole Toomey. Needs it to hold. She's close to perfection, Nicole Toomey. What a bowl. What a bowl. Well, it was well played because the other good thing about that, Alex, playing with that reaching weight, it just gives you some options where the bowls can sort of move around. My goodness, you've got all sorts of things going on on your screen there, Alex. Is, I'm uh, attempting to multitask. That's very bad. If I go quiet, it's because the multitasking's gone badly for me, Kev. very technical. <laughs> and going wide here is Lindsay Clark. New Zealand leading 7-2 as we play in 7 of 18 in this women's pairs semi-final at the Multinations here at Broadbeach in, Christ in uh, the Gold Coast. Tomorrow, of course, we change things around. And the men's go to triples and pairs. And the uh, women go to singles and forwards. That's right. And then at the very end of it, we get all the finals played in one day, or two days, whatever it is, at uh, the Broad Beach Bowling Club. So the finals at the end of the week. As we see Val Smith here on the forehand side, New Zealand taking the early lead here in this game. And Val looking just to add to it. If she gets a bit of jack movement, it's all good. This is close here from Val Smith. Anything? Well, a nice nestle. That's, that's a good ball. That's well played. That's a good that's ball. well played and just got six inches of movement on the jack. Sat a couple of poles down. And that all of a sudden makes his head very different for Australia. What do you play here, Alex? Do you charge at the front of the head? I think you kill it. I think you go for the, yeah, I think you, you go, well, Australia's got the backers ball, though it's not that far back. One, it's a, it's a one-shot, two-shot result. If you kill it, it goes on the two-metre, you get a bowl each at drawing the two-metre mark. If you remove some bowls on the way through, that's fine. So I think we'll see. Big weight here from Natasha. On the forehand. Glad I called it right, and look at that. Goes pretty quick. That's a lovely shot there. Oh, I've got it absolutely perfect on the drive. Yeah. And we'll go to the two-metre mark. And one bowl each, Kev. 
And this this shot is harder than it looks. Well, it is. The, the big thing here for Val, of course, is just it doesn't just to get down as close as you can, looking to see where that breeze is coming from. Is the New Zealand player 632 caps for New Zealand made her debut back in 2003. World champion, done everything as Val Smith. On the forehand, Val Smith looking to draw to the two metre mark. It was killed and put there by the Australian skip. Is oh, she close? This is a great bowl here from Val Smith. She's right down to the very two metre. Close. That's beautiful. And, you know, a, a good bowl has to be played here from, by Natasha Van Elder. But the most you're going to drop is one anyway. But that was well played. And we see Natasha now. Playing for the bowl. Or Jack. Playing for the bowl or Jack. And just going to... That's the shot. Well played with the Australian skip. Very good shot there. Australians delighted. <laughs> but, um, now, here's the question. Bit of affection <laughs> shown there by the, uh, uh, by the Australians. But that was well played. Two good bowls there from uh, Natasha Van Elder. Got the uh, drive, got the drive clean. Uh, and got it to the two metre mark, of course, and then drew and after a good vol from Val Smith, uh, drew the shot. So well played. Now Australia had been throwing the jack short before New Zealand decided that was a good idea. Well, we predicted this, didn't we, uh, Alex? And here Bear we go. It just fascinates me the psychology here. Now the first bowl from Kylie Whitehead. Tell you, the New on Zealand the forehand. Sorry, Alex. The New Zealand fours lead means fours lead six three after five of the fifteen hits Sorry, against Hong Kong, China. I believe the women's pairs are also still locked up. Eight all after seven ends now. Caitlin and Selena playing the Australian team. So Liam Paulson with the jack a couple of feet just below that of the two metre mark. Looks a pretty good opening bowl here from Liam Paulson. That's well played. Great shot. After the jack had been a, a different length and sits right alongside it. Well played by Paulson. Certainly relishing the opportunity to play for New Zealand as uh, the county's Manukau player. And Putting on a pretty good display to date in this semi-final. Yeah, playing very well. Practices so hard, does Leanne. And we see with her second bowl now. We put that practice into reality. Again, as a look over there, that scoreboard, Republic of South Africa leading Australia 13 points to one after seven ends. And what must be the other semi-final. But back to this game, Leanne Paulson now looking it's to well just down hold again. up that little bit. Uh, That's good leading. Doesn't matter good where it finishes, it puts one in behind. Just to roll in behind. That's a good start to the head. And just indicating to Lindsay Clark, draw inside Kylie's bowl. That's Kylie Whitehead's bowl. You're close to getting the result. Very experienced bowler, Lindsay Clark. Not far away, not far away, Alex. Gets the jack, oh. might this works for New Zealand. Got the slice. S slice of heaven for yeah. if you're a New Zealand supporter. A slice of hell if you're an Australian. And Nicole Toomey on the forehand now. New Zealand team chugging along well at this juncture. Holding two on the head, looking to make it three. Uh, this is a good, good ball here from Nicole Toomey. Just as long as it comes by, or it's set. Oh, uh, well, that we're holding three, we're but holding I'm not three. sure it's for long, Kev. No, we would have preferred to, well, I'm sure they would have liked to have had another metre of running on it, but we'll see now. 
And Zed Clark will be endearing to play up there on her backhand. Doesn't have to be asked twice to have a go at this on the on the forehand side, Lindsay Clark. If she clears the front bowl, she's close, but she's not going to clear the front okay. bowl, Kev. Well, we're going to change over. So how do we change this? So you're skipping the New Zealand team. We're change, holding three. There's a very clear it, change danger. Hand. They're straight away. Yeah, that's, that's the jack position. That's the movement of the jack exactly where Val Smith has positioned her foot on that backhand side of the rink. So it's about covering where the jack is going to go, leave the shot open for the opposition to play. Got to be past the head with this bowl. Well, it needs to be outside these bowls as well, uh, Alex. Oh, it's going to come Goodness. up short. Well, we know that uh, Natasha Van Eldick certainly won't be short. She'll be reaching for and, sure. And how, there. how important is this first bowl of Natasha's? As a statement of intent too, you're, tra you're trailing 7-3, so it's neither here nor there, but you're looking to score points. Three down on the head, this first ball of Natasha's can be perfect. If it is, that's a pretty good statement, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And you know, look, These are the sorts of shot positions that uh, Australians sort of relish. <laughs> on the forehand is the Australian skip, and certainly playing with... Reaching weight up through to the port. Don't think it's going to hold long enough. Oh, Might, in fact, get the back of the cold to me bowl and does. It's really called a big end, but I feel like it's a big end. Is there merit to just clogging it up on the forehand, Kev? Even if you fall short, if you're Val Smith and line on the forehand, change the there shot is, for the Australian? Is, but I'm sure knowing, like Val Smith knows these Australian players uh, very, very well. And we know what sort of shot Van Eldick mm is going to play um, so that's um, of course Val Smith can play on that backhand and still count as yeah, well yeah for uh, sure absolutely uh, she get, Val can actually get behind the jack that's what she's opting and, to play and here and still count on that backhand side of the rink so on the backhand is the New Zealand skip this is close here from Val well, this is the line to get to the back. Going to play, play it perfectly. Absolutely perfectly from Val Smith. Right on the line. Literally, literally negates the Australian bowl in behind the head. So, we'll reach with weight, no doubt. Will Natasha Van Eldick, and certainly is, endeavouring to reach up to that. And got it wider this time out of the hand. That means it'll come back now. Down, 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 down. Oh, half a bowl. Half a bowl off from the Australian there. An opportunity now to score a big number. So New Zealand's still holding. Dale Smith going back to her forehand. And a touch of the jack here, Alex, is five shots for New Zealand. Yep. A really big opportunity. Great attempt here from Val Smith. Just not going to quite get all the way oh, back. Oh, beautiful weight though, but wasn't it? Another end gone, and New Zealand scored two, and that was a touch in the jack there. Certainly favoured New Zealand not to be, but New Zealand scored. And as we approach the halfway part of this game, New Zealand taking a lead. A 9-3 lead. And Leanne, I'll be going back to the short. I was going to say, tell me we're going back to the short end. Oh, it just fascinates me. I love the, the jack thrown aspect of the game. It's something we don't see as much I suppose at a, at a club level or even a regional level but when we get into the the proper bowls we see the um, the jack throwing really come into to its own and how important it can be to setting the the tone of the game as well Kev. Well it's interesting if we take the, the home nations especially Scotland and, and England you know they use the length of the jack so much of their whole game strategy is we watch Leanne Paulson again trying to get down to the jack. Just going to fall low of the jack. Lovely line. Just a little bit short. 
And Kylie Whitehead now on her back end. Very smooth delivery. The girl from Wodonga. She's going to run all the way. Yes, it will. Paulson again on a good line to get down to the jack. Just needs to get past her own bowl. And feathers the front bowl. And the men's fours, I can tell you now, 16's gone. And it is New Zealand Great leading. shot. Look at that from Kylie Whitehead. Sorry, kept to interrupt, but she right. just trailed the jack around the corner. And it is New Zealand leading Hong Kong, China now. 8-3 in the men's fours. So, Nicole Toomey now on her forehand. You're right, Alex. You watch that foot positioning on the mat. It is quite... Uh, no one could ever... Uh, <laughs> no one could ever say, I think you're foot-faulting, Nicole. Like oh, it's, uh, has it got the weight no. to get all the way to that Hold. jack? It has. Oh, dear. Just got the outside line to the jack, moved it, touches two down still. Good attempt though by Nicole Toomey. Half a bowl there. Nicole Toomey just slightly narrow. That was a good bowl, just a bad result. And she's got a bowl to salvage though, the one in her hand. And Lindsay Clark now with holding two Australia with New Zealand leading 9-3. Has it got the weight to get all the way down? Is this bowl of Clarks? Yes, it has. And Nicole Toomey really now has to follow that bowl of Lindsay Clarks. Try and get into the counting area or even to get second shot. Second yeah. shot's a good position. So here's the experience of Val Smith, isn't it? Because it's not about getting the shot. You don't have to think, oh, how am I going to get the shot with this bowl? What Val's thinking is we've got three bowls left in this head. How is there a way that I can either mitigate the damage or maybe score the shot with my last bowl? So it's about calling a clever shot here for Nicole Toomey, and she's not far away. I'll tell you what, why not just get the shot with this bowl, Nicole? Why not just do it now? Just about. What a great effort. Slicing the jack slightly, but a good second shot there and reasonably safe. So New Zealand likely to drop a one this end, but it's looking less likely to drop a number after that shot there from Nicole Toomey, and well played. Lindsay Clark now on the forehand. You can see holding the shot at 12 o'clock. And another shot essentially at 12. If it just gets up that little bit, yeah, well, draw two there. The good thing there, Alex, is it finished inside the. Uh, so there's no work off, so yeah. to speak. There's not a bowl to work off. I was hoping it was just going to finish outside a wee bit, which would have given Val an opportunity to work off a bowl, but it actually came inside. But uh, Val Smith has got all the ability in the world. She knows what's, what to do. Just to repeat, New Zealand leading in the men's fours. 8-3 after six ends. So, Val Smith taking her time. Will go to her forehand. Leading 9-3 at the halfway mark in this woman's pairs semi-final and it's going to be under the line and will still be no, make no difference to that bowl Van Eldick now the head's open for her to draw difficulty is of course as well Alex is that there's quite a number of bowls sitting sitting in front of their head do you think someone played a good bowl there Kev? <laughs> I think it was in the Australia Australia Queensland men's fours game. I think that's uh, where it came from, Alex. Yeah. Playing out in the middle of the rink out there, which is pretty close to that game. In fact, it was an okay shot. It's Queensland leading 4 3, I can tell you that. So here is Natasha Van Eldick. On the forehand side, Australia holding a two here. She's looking to make it more than that. Look at this ball. When's it going to stop? That's the question. Not soon enough, and Val Smith needs to get another ball on the head with her ball. Well, second shot's a good ball here for uh, for New Zealand, really. 
If we look at the scoreboard, 9-3. And, you know, a one. That's the, I'm sure Val's objective will be to get second shot. Is it out wide enough yet? This is a better line from Val Smith. Needs to get past this blue bowl. And is it going to get some contact? Yes, it did. Uh, it didn't make really any difference. Good attempt, though, from Val Smith. Two down. And one bowl left, of course, for the Australian skip for Natasha Van Eldick. So an opportunity here for Australia. Remember, they are trailing 9-3. Well, one thing here, Alex, Van Eldick wouldn't want to touch the jack or move the jack six to nine inches. No. Oh, look, by the way, that uh, drink bottle that you can see in the middle of your screen yeah. is yeah. bigger than Tamara's drink bottle. <laughs> It is, it's that is. Ridiculous. <laughs> That's a half gallon. Um, now, here we go. Look bottle. at this from the Australian. Oh, we've Natasha, a little slice of the jack. Didn't oh, need it. She's got three it anyway. Well played. Beautiful bowls. A good end from the Aussies there. Please don't do this, Nicole. I've already typed in three. What was it? Well, three? it was three, you know. It was, uh, uh, yeah. So, another meeting for the Australians. A lot of applause. Lots of conversation <laughs> about this chat. Kylie Whitehead running up with uh, hands in the air, all sorts of things. And the last report we had from the women's peers, it was nine apiece, correct, uh, Alex? Yes, yeah. after seven ends. And the men's fours, it is New Zealand leading 8-3 at the completion of six of 18. You do wonder sometimes with all this conversation about jack length, if it becomes... I know it's important, but does it then does it get to a stage where you're now overthinking it? You go, oh well, we threw it short, and then they threw it short, I, and we dropped a point, and then we threw it long, well, and we dropped a point. Alex, so what do we one do? One could say being somewhat, yeah, possibly you know? a bit selfish in this statement, but one would think that when you get to this level of playing, playing internationally, shouldn't really make your mindset shouldn't really make any difference. Well, these players will will be of the opinion that they can dr play any shot at any length in any condition, and they're good enough to do so. So it's, it's just, it fascinates me. It's been interesting to watch this game. Well, anyway, it's 6-9. Well, we did think at some stage that Australian would go to the two metre. That's their favoured length, as we know, and that's exactly what they have done. And Kylie Whitehead finishes jack level. Ian Paulson, very methodical in her delivery and everything stays down arm comes up gives every opportunity to get a arc, good arc on the ball with that sort of delivery as it comes down towards the two meter needed a meter just a meter short there going to that two meter mark and Kylie will switch her hand you would think to the backhand side Again, thank you for tuning in to watch this coverage. If you haven't done already, I would uh, implore you, please click the subscribe button on the Bowls New Zealand YouTube channel, and then you won't have to go looking for the streams. They'll come looking for you. You'll get notified every time the Bowls New Zealand channel goes live. And we are here for the rest of the week at the Multi Nations for 2023. And Kylie Whitehead there, drawing second shot, but three short bowls. Kev on this two change of, change of hand. Well, I suppose the change of length as well. It has been a wee bit uh, different for the for the players. So also. Paulson. On the forehand, Leanne Paulson. Needs to get past her own oh, by a metre. Is she wide? She uses her optimus, so they should come back. Well, if it comes within the two metre area, that's fine. Back that, you come. That's absolutely and fine. Sit. <laughs> Very good. You're happy enough with that, aren't you, as a lead when you, your second bowl, your first one's forgettable, but the second bowl was good enough. Lindsay Clark. Now. Oh, she's got to run into it, is she? No, she won't. So Australia holding three now. And Val indicating. Yeah, good call. That's good skipping from Val. She said, if you run into that bowl and clear out, it's fine. Absolutely. So it's I, give, essentially giving Nicole license to err on the perfect track. Absolutely. I'll tell you the means. 
means fours. New Zealand just scored again as we watch this Good. bowl here at Toomey's. It's going pretty quick on the way through. Oh, panic stations for the New Zealand team here. Oh, no, she snicked over Liam Polson's bowl. There's still room for a good shot. So New Zealand near lead Hong Kong. China by 10-3 in the semi-final of the men's fours. 10-3. That's a good update to be given. Oh, this head's starting to build nasty. Do you go for the jack? Be yeah. brave. Absolutely. Be brave. Absolutely. You've got Val Smith following you. She's going to cut it down if you miss. Be brave. Brave on your forehand. Well, you can, it can easily get caught up in, in these sort of head situations, Alex, can't you? And so here's Nicole Toomey looking for the jack or the shot bowl. Close, Nicole. How long is it going to hold up, though, as it comes down towards the... Australian bowls, this is this will help, well played. So whether it's shot or second shot, certainly got a feather off a bowl. Good shot. But was in the target area. Good shot. That was a nice, that was a positive bowl to play. Probably with a minimum weight, to be fair. I expected I it, it would to have be a, a bit, bit heavier weight, than that. Alex, actually. And I can tell you that it's 12-9 now to Caitlin and Selena after 10 ends in the air semi-final against Jamie Lee, Wersnip and Dawn Heyman from Australia, either green or yellow. I'm not sure which one, just as I do not know what colour the scoreboard is for Australia in this game. But they do have two teams in this multi-nations event. Well, Dawn Heyman being very successful in New South Wales. Very successful and very good player. Came into Australia uh, later, I suppose, but certainly made uh, every post. Was Raymond Martin giving you an update. was 10-3 the score. Yeah. Thanks, Ray. <laughs> Good, uh, he's cognizant of that. On Look the at drive is Van Eldick. On the drive going. It's going to get some contact. We'll see what happened. There are lots of bowls that are no longer on the range. Well, all of a sudden, Australia have only got one bowl close to the head. That's the blue bowl there of Kylie Whitehead's. <laughs> What's happened? Well, it was it, it was on target but off target at the same time. And so often, Alex, in those situations, as you know, you can be one bowl off on your target and you get a lot of other right. things on the way through. That weight is fine if you hit what you're going for, but when you don't, interesting things happen. And New Zealand now, out of nowhere, really out of nowhere, have a chance to score more than one on this end. Well, we were looking at four down early on on the head, weren't we? Oh, until, it doesn't seem like that it was that long until, ago. Until, like, it was only it was three bowls ago, and Nicole Toomey you got that little slide. So here now, Val Smith will be doing her utmost. Just taking her time. And it's not about the number. The number isn't with this bowl. The number is with Val's last bowl so you get a second or even a third shot here see what the Australian skip does then you can look to play a shot so Val Smith just looking to draw a second shot really well needs just to get past this front bowl we'll here with the square. Or get it clean get it square. got it clean that'll count so okay they what both is go it? clean <laughs> so oh, that, that's the, this is that big call here from Australia 9-6 2 down Get your own bowl out. Still, and Val Smith's got a bowl left. If she is feeling confident, yeah, exactly what Lindsay said. Yeah, and that's the decision. If you're confident, and she won't be because she just missed. But if she is, you go it. They both go with no jack movement. Yeah, so Lindsay's trying to talk out of the run shot here. That's she a good certainly call. is. And playing. there's Lindsay's experience coming through. And that's about playing that draw weight through and getting the inside. Going to have a look is uh, Van Elder. But that is your so, quote. So if she gets the inside of the blue bowl of Carly Whitehead, it could, it could go sideways and get to the jack. But it gives him another bowl on the head, Alex, as yeah. well. And the instinct will be, for an aggressive player, the bowl at 12 o'clock of Liam Polson's is touching Nicole Toomey's bowl that sits sort of diagonally to that. If you hit Liam Polson's bowl, those two bowls split off clean. The only jack movement would be if your collision bowl followed through square well, onto The it. other thing, which of course could happen on the drive, it could go, you could get that target, the bowls go sideways, and that blue bowl could be 
the, removed. The danger being yeah. Australia's got one ball on the yeah. head now that, because that we've could, just seen the drive If they shot. got the back the side of that, it could go straight across and remove that uh, blue ball right off the head mm. without actually getting the bit ball clean. So It's interesting. You feel like there's not enough Australian bowls on the head to hit that front ball. No, I certainly don't think that it, there is. And But, but part of me would really like well, to see it. Well, I think Natasha Van Helder, I, think I she wants feel, to play it. I think she does too, well, I'd like to see the shot. Like There's a, perf there's a perfect shot there because if you get the front ball of Leanne's at 12 and they split off and your collision ball follows through and everything's happy days. I think she... There is perfection available. It just... It just feels a bit dangerous, Kim. I think she wants to play it. So, hands in the air. Um, New Zealand lead, 9-6, men's fours. Uh, as we just uh, reported, direct from New Zealand skip Raymond Martin. Yeah, New me on the shoulder. It was great. <laughs> it you, is Ray. New Zealand leading 10-3 v Hong Kong, China. And if the guys were able to pull off that victory, what sweet revenge that will going, be. I think she's going for the bowls clean. The interesting thing will be the weight that she chooses because you can choose to have your collision ball follow through. Nah, she's just going for the two balls clean. Looking to remove the New Zealand balls on the forehand. Going very quick. She's close. Going very she's close. quick. She's got it. She doesn't have it. <laughs> she, how did that not move? Well, interesting. That's a good result for Australia because that was on the angle as well to get that blue ball. It was. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Certainly might have got the target, but also I'm picking, if it had been right on target, I think would have got their bowl as well, Alex. That was just all sorts of, I don't know what to say. <laughs> ah, well, Val I'll Smith just, I'll now. take a breath. <laughs> uh, if I was Val, I wouldn't be too concerned if I d drew another one or not here. I'd just be relieved that, uh, and it's not going to. It's the Nicole Toomey bowl, which will remain shot. New Zealand hit double figures as we complete in 10 of 18 and it is New Zealand now the, the uh, combination of uh, Leanne Paulson, Leanne Paulson, Nicole Toomey and Val Smith who now lead the Australian team of Natasha Van Eldick, Lindsay Clark and Kylie Whitehead by 10 shots to 6. And a great game it has been too. Now we are also now interesting, we're going to play the three quarter length Oh, I'm, I'm beginning to lose track of what length Jack we're supposed to be playing too, Kev. Yeah, no, Val Smith deliberately, you can see, stood out on the on the green there, definitely looking at her. Oh, she's gone short. Very short. The mats, there it is. It's, it's as short as it can be. Yeah, oh, it, just, it just fascinates me. Well, I wonder, you know, these, these decisions, they're made within the teams, but would that be a function? Would a rink coach go, well, look, you know, we should be throwing short ends or long ends or maybe you've been watching a team play during the week and notice they're favouring a certain well, I don't know. It, it also, I would say if you're a coach, also depends Look at this here. on the first bowl effectiveness you're getting out of your lead. And that there is first bowl effectiveness. Absolutely. Beautiful there from the So the also. length becomes somewhat irrelevant, so to speak, because you own the jack, you own the head, and that's exactly uh, what Leanne Paulson has done is, is done here. Kylie Whitehead very close here as well. It's going to finish Jack Level or Jack High, in fact, and that's also good for New Zealand. It's like having a, a second Jack there because that's the drawing bowl for Leanne Paulson. That's where she needs to draw to. I've just noticed, Kev, that there are people playing bowls. Just roll up bowls on the next. Why well, would, would. I'd be watching. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, Leanne Paulson on the backhand. Well played. Well Look played. At this. Gets a touch, Beautiful. gets a bit, but well played. Beautiful leading there from Leanne. I might have relayed the story, Alex, the first time that the English team played in coloured clothing yes. in the New Zealand side and played at, played at Remuera on a, on, a, on a Saturday. And I can remember the mature age gentleman of Remuera turning up, he's an international being played on the front green at Rimuera and they're turning up for their Saturday afternoon roll up and saying, well what's going on here? What's this, why are they in this, all this coloured stuff? <laughs> <laughs> and that was the first time for in New Zealand at an international that coloured clothing, coloured clothing. had been, had been uh, worn and it was at Rimuera and let's say at that, the horror <laughs> the horror of, yeah, and the um, yeah, what's going on here as they walked past and went out onto the back green to Did have their a roll-up? Yeah, roll-up, that's great. 
Looking for the jack here is Lindsay Clark. Just going to be a bowl under, I think. Now, it's imperative here, though, that Nicole Toomey, I think, needs to get an, you know, short with the first. Needs to get another bowl in and around the head. Leaning 10-6 is New Zealand. Alex just gave you an update of the women's pairs. That's uh, Caitlin Inch and uh, Selena Goddard. They're leading in their match. And Raymond Martin gave us a, an update in the in the women's fours. And well played, Nicole Great Toomey. Great shot from Nicole And sits Toomey. right in behind the jack. That's an ideal spot. Beautiful stuff here. And the New Zealand team, they're looking assured, aren't they, really? There's been yes, they are. a couple of little speed wobbles. And to be fair, we've probably been... I don't think the Australian team is playing to their potential, not to what they, they are capable of playing yet. Well, uh, but an assured team performance so far from New Zealand. Oh, well Clark. played here from Clark. That's, That's classy. Maybe unlucky. She may have set away from the jack. Could be one to New Zealand. Just look for an indication. And we'll see from... We'll Trial the camera angles, but we still can't see where the jack is. And uh, we'll know by how... Well, whatever hand valves... There it there is. There we are, so holding one. You can yeah, see it's holding just essentially one shot touching there. that bolt. Um, yeah, I, I personally think, you know, watch, uh, watch Alex, watching this New Zealand, the whole New Zealand side, men and women, paras, the, the all involved, that I sense a, 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 ref, a refreshness, so to speak, uh, within the New Zealand side. They're getting on exceptionally well and they're performing well on the green. And I just think there's a, you know... Um, it's a wonderful a, squad, isn't it, really? A good competitive squad and trying to... Sure, they the big goals of the World Championship, the uh, World Champs in September. We don't know who's going to be in the side. But it's good to see all of these players here are putting their hands up. For sure. And, I, you know, it's a job I would never... You couldn't even pay me to do a selector's job, Kev. They can, they can stick that... <laughs> They can, st they can stick to it. I won't be doing it. Thank you very much. So many good bowlers around. And we see here. Well, you never get it right, Alex. Doesn't matter. Oh, who, precisely. Doesn't matter who you pick, so. I'd rather not even bother trying. See on the four back end. Sorry, just the delivery looked like she was on the forehand side there. Trying to get that touch on the front bowl of Lindsay Clark's. Just going to go under it. And from New Zealand's point of view here as well, Alex, to hold on to one is good because it's another end gone. You know, you, you, you go to possibly 11, 6 in front. That's certainly not a commanding lead, but it's a comfortable little lead. Another end gone. Yeah, and it does become about ticking away ticking away the ends, doesn't it? It certainly does, and it puts your opposition as well in a different mindset, Alex, because they know that they have to score. And Val Smith just running into it on the side chip of one of the Australian bowls but not many shot options open here for Van Eldick she's trying to play that shunt bolt to get it to get onto it to turn the jack oh, she's in the target area here is the Australian skip and just great try just goes by our count that's well, our vision before it was one to New Zealand and if it is it takes New Zealand to 11-6 and remember, we play 18 ends, and we have played now 11 of those 18 ends. And I can tell you in the other matches alongside that, it is South Africa and the, the other women's triples match. It is South Africa uh, who are leading Australia by 13 shots to six. The other men's fours semi-final, that's Australia versus Queensland and I just can't quite see that board at present there we go you can see it now and it is 9-6 to Australia New Zealand v Hong Kong China and it is New Zealand leading 10-3 at this point of that semi-final so here is Nicole Toomey playing Sorry, sorry, yeah. The impulse and playing to that shorter length. But again, Alexi, the, the thing I'm really liking about this is this the impulse and leading is that first bowl effectiveness. And it's, 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 it's under a half a metre away all the time. And oh, absolutely. She's just been there or thereabouts time and time again, hasn't she? 
and that's what gives you such a great launching pad and and removes the dangers of fours and fives and those sorts of things as we see Kylie Whitehead has come up short with her first bowl and Val Smith indicating to her lead Leanne Paulson go to the back end she certainly visualises before she gets onto the mat, Alex. She's uh, very, very precise, isn't she? Very precise. Ian Paulson. On the backhand. Really takes her time. As you see, the New Zealand team are, are leading 11 6 in the semi final. Of course, after this day is played, the section play for the women's fours and singles and men's. Pairs and triples begins, and then at the end of that, we see the finals of all four events. And of course, with the Paris, both men and women, they play a double round double robin. Double round robin, uh, that's, that's right. So, yeah. which, uh, so they'll be playing that tomorrow as Kylie Whitehead runs into. So does that mean that they start their second round tomorrow, Alex? Does it? I, I believe I, that's how it works. Yeah. Yes, and they'll just uh, continue through and then the top four. Go oh. through to their semi finals. The New One. Zealand power is going okay. The uh, women's power team of Julie O'Connell and Terry Blackbourne undefeated at the stage, and Mark Noble and Darren Mullen with a bit of work to do. But double round Robin, there's still a chance there for them. So, falling short here is uh, Nicole Toomey after Kylie Whitehead ran into her own bowl, her first bowl, and pushed it in for shot. So, Lindsay Clark now. On her backhand, sorry, on her forehand, playing down to the two blue bowls, just needs to get under and going to do That's so. Well it's That's just well very played. well played and sits right on the centre line. So New Zealand really need to get a bowl closer on the head. So as uh, Val Smith has got the chance to move things around. Cole on the backhand, so she needs to correct that first bowl at one o'clock is where she finished, leading just to give that a little bit more weight. That's disappointing there from Nicole. Oh, it was I a beautiful it. line twice, yeah, it wasn't was. it? had a perfect line, just need a couple more rolls to be into the head, but I, uh, I suppose just looking out the window here, you know, Val Smith can play to that bowl, I think, quite confidently. There's Lindsay Clark again getting down to this blue bowl of Kylie Whiteheads and uh, may well count. Not sure. Val so Smith. New Zealand, this is almost the first this is the first time in a while that Val has crossed over in a in a position well not it's not even a bad position, I don't want to say it's a bad position. It's the first time Australia's crossed over holding a couple in a while. Yeah, so the shot selection here for, for Val is also a wee bit challenging because there's a few bowls in the front which you don't really want there. And Val Smith having a good look at what shot is going to play from the mat. I think it's going to go to her backhand because that's where that Nicole Toomey bowl also sits as well. And some contact with that will take it in towards the head. And that's the sort Close of here, Val Smith on the backhand side. She's close here. Needs it to hold just a little. Needs it to hold. Well, unlucky because that's oh, the shot. Such that a good we, effort. That's the shot that we spoke about, Alex, and it was certainly it was only one roll yeah. away, really, from uh, getting a perfect result. So can. Rebecca Van Ash head to the hit. Yes, she will. Good bowl. This, this head building building well. New Zealand, you know, you've, they've eked out and deserve to be 11-6 up. You don't want to throw it all away in one end, well, Kev. You don't want to drop a number. Could all disappear. disappear. You know, these Australians are so good, you, you can't really afford to let them get back in the game. This looks wide out of her hand, Kev. Needs to come back a long it's way. A short end, it won't turn I very can, much. I can tell why it's Val, trying. It's trying. It's trying. Hard. Down you come, Val. Get, hasn't got the weight to get the turn. Mm -hmm. I just wondered, Alex, whether it's better to play with weight through the split. Would have been a consideration. 
That's a hard end. That's a hard end from New Zealand. Bowls that were there or thereabouts, but just not. Two and a measure. Not right. Cool. Two and a measure. Tighten up a notch. You want to hurt. Touch the jack. Four shots. Here we go. Natasha on the forehand side. Very smooth delivery. Australia sitting on six. They won't be in a few seconds. Desperately needs this bowl to count as a bonus if you're an Australian supporter. Hasn't done so, so let's see what it was. Two and a half, they said. There's one, there's two. Well, if it's only the two, one could say, Alex, that, that was a bit of a let off, actually. Why, why is Leanne holding on to the jack? Was this a camera angle issue here? Well, certainly Sorry, yeah. folks, I've, we've miscalled that. Sorry, because it certainly looked as though it No, was. we've miscalled that horrendously. So New Zealand actually holding two. I'm blaming, I think if I was to put blame, I'd blame Sarah and Tamara uh, because they are controlling the cameras. So <laughs> apologies. Sorry, sorry. But uh, two points there to New Zealand. And I must admit, that's a very pleasant surprise because I thought we were staring I, I down the barrel sure. of a bundle. I was sure that New Zealand were down. Our apologies to people. But remember, we're sitting inside, not rinkside. So Just looking at the camera angles. And uh, sometimes at that distance, the depth perception goes. And it, I mean, it explains a lot, doesn't it, Kev? Yeah, it <laughs> does. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> you know. Well, it makes what, a lot of things. Well, well, one would have thought then, that if that been the case, though, that Natasha Van Elder would have played with, more than likely, more weight, Alex. Yeah, well, it, what, explains, you know? it explains Val's two bowls, I think. Uh, a surprise. She was just trying to dead draw, really, to the head, wasn't she? So, right, we'll put that one down as a head gone, right? Yeah. And New Zealand uh, definitely holding one here, Kev. <laughs> and, well, not now. And now they're definitely <laughs> one down. I say that without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> So the Ampolson has been very consistent throughout this uh, semi-final. On the backhand side, very grooved delivery. That's what he bowl. Every time she lets go of a bowl, that's what it looks like. It's how it comes out of her hand. Oh, this is on a good line. Just going to depend on the weight. Not quite there. New Zealand now in the men's fours. They lead Hong Kong by 10-4. 10-4 New Zealand leading. After... I think 10 ends, I think it is. Excellent, that's good news. I'll keep you updated if I can get uh, another update from the women's peers. Yeah, another good ball by Kylie Whitehead. Good shot from Kylie. 13-6, New Zealand now lead in this women's peers semi-final here at the Multi Nations at uh, Broad Beach. In the other men's semi-final, it is Australia leading Queensland by 12-6. On and the back end, Nicole Toomey willing it to hold. She's got the jack clean and well shrouded played. back. What a bowl. Well played from the what Wellington a player. Bowl. Two lovely bowls from Kylie Whitehead. Nicole what, Toomey reaching through with that yard of weight, reaches through the bowls. Well played. And Lindsay Clark now having to play to her altered uh, jack length. And, of course, no longer on the centre line as well. Not going to have the weight to get all the way down, I don't think. Well, finishes Jack level. And uh, remains a good display here from the New Zealand team. And I'm sorry, Alex, it's nine ends gone in the men's fours, not ten. Nine of 15 gone. Nicole. So, Nicole Toomey now, after playing that magnificent trail shot, trying to get another bowl on their heads. Closing to do so, get the yellow Hold bowl Nicole. and sits on it. That's fine, moves it right out of the head. I can report that Caitlin and Selena are now 16-9 up after 12 ends of their 18 end pairs game against Jamie Lee, Warsnip and Dawn Heyman of Australia, green or yellow. It's just Australia. It's always just, it's just Australia. Just Australia, eh? Oh, well oh, played here that. from Lindsay Clark. How classy was that from Lindsay? Just drew round the front bowl and just to the jack. 13-6 New Zealand lead as we play in 13 of 18. And tightening up now in the other women's semi-final as well because it is South Africa now leading after 12 of 18 ends. 
it is South Africa leading the Australian side, the other Australian uh, side, uh, by 13 shots to nine. 13 9. So they haven't scored in a while. They might be stuck on that 13, South Africa. It was yeah. about 13 1 or 12 1. It was 13 13 1. Belle Smith now on her forehand after that magnificent bowl we just saw from Lindsay Clark. Eh, good. She's close here. Belle, Belle Smith just needs to get to the bowl. No, Jack. The needs back to get of the, the bowl. bowl. Do just. That cannot have been far away, Kev. Well, it was good way to try and get that movement. So, is this going to be, for New Zealand, a continuation of that good form which was seen over the last two days? You'd and like to think uh, so. Well, the scoreboards are looking favourable, Alex, at this yeah, point. Yeah, and I think it is about making hay while the sun shines. You know, if we just think about this game, New Zealand leading 13-6 now on N13. We know how good Australia is. They're going to make a comeback. Make hay, while, make hay while the sun shines. Get as many points on the board as you possibly can at the beginning. As we see this shot here from Natasha underneath. That's beautiful. Two shots. Beautiful yeah. bowling there. Although, Val. I think she can. What does she play? Well, I reckon she can reach that with a lot of weight. And yes, it's exactly what Val Smith is going to do. Very focused. On the forehand, Val Smith. So you can reach down there to the Nicole Toomey bowl. This is close Order here. the yellows. This is close here from Val. Get down. How's good this? How? Oh. Well, it's only one. That was a beautiful effort from well Val Well played Smith. from Val Smith. Well, it's the, it's the experience uh, really showing the Alex, isn't it? You know, played that shot. That's a good shot. <laughs> and Australia... Looking to roll Val's bowl out. And that's going to be worth a three or a four. You can see on your screen there, Val's bowl hidden largely by the Australian green or yellow bowl. <laughs> that sits at nine o'clock. All it needs to do, there we are, Val's bowl that now sits at three o'clock on your screen. Roll that bowl out, three for Australia. That's what the Australian skip will be playing for here. I can tell you in the men's fours, we've had a, a change after nine ends. It is now New Zealand leading 10-6 after 9 of 15 ends versus well, that Hong trend Kong. can stop whenever it wants as we see <laughs> the Australian skip here on the forehand. She's going to hit Nicole Toomey's bowl, chipped off Nicole Toomey's bowl. One to Australia. Just the one. 7-13 now. That's a good scoreboard end, Alex, actually, because that could have, uh, you know, if that very, very good bowl of Lindsay Clark's, so it's a very good uh, scoreboard end. Just the one New Zealander uh, dropped on that end there. And Australia with another team chat about where to throw the little white ball. Now 13-9 now I see in that other uh, South Africa-Australia women's pairs, the game next door as well. Whitehead just taking a time. Where's the jack? To the two meter mark, it is. So here is the lady from Madonga, world champion to champion singles winner in 2019. And of course, defeating our own New Zealand Debbie White in that final. And oh, there Kylie Whitehead sits right on oh. top of the jack. You've got to feel that Australia needs to be on the charge home here. You're on the 14th end of 18. You trail 7.13. Now is the time to change gears if you are an Australian supporter for New Zealand. They lead by six points. They've worked hard to get that lead. Got to hold on to it. Oh, yeah, to hold on to it. There, dr dropping away. That's the worst bowl. She'll be disappointed with that. It's the, it's the loosest bowl that she's played to date in this 
semi-final. Yeah, she'll make her amends with the second one. But we talk about dividing games up, don't we, Kevin? Absolutely. In this, in this space, the players and the coaches will go, well, it's 18 in, so it's three, three six three, end games. Three sixes, correct, absolutely. New Zealand did better in the first six ends. New Zealand did better in the second six ends. Tighter, though, in the second six. It was tighter. That if Australia can finish strong in the Absol- last six ends. <laughs> absolutely. It's going to be a stressy time to be a New Zealander. So let's hope that doesn't happen. If I uh, can just announce my bias now, if you can't tell from the accent. So we see Leanne Paulson on the forehand looking to make amends for her first while. Going you see for the jack straight o'clock. away, but it's not going to get to the line. Trying to rest to the jack, and that's fine. That's At least she's finished past the head Absolutely. Little. The other match as well, the other semi-final really starting to tighten up now, Alex. It's now 13-10. 13-10 to Australia, to South Africa, sorry. I, su- I suppose as we see the shadows come across the green too, the players have to be cognizant it may change the way the rinks are playing. It starts to happen. And here now, this is all I'll say now from Nicole Toomey. This is why you've been picked to play number two for New Zealand. Yeah, it's a key ball here from Nicole Toomey. Absolutely it is. This is a big, in the context of the whole match. On her backhand here. You know, the, the match been brought up quite a distance by the Australians Jack's on the 2 metre mark needs to start to drop inside now, we might be lucky oh, wouldn't have minded a, a smaller feather <laughs> a smaller feather would have ran towards the Jack at least one down, maybe two Lindsay Clark on the back uh, forehand, these deliveries are doing my head in <laughs> With yep. the foot placement. Oh, that's Kev. way under the line. And now here's the chance for Nicole Toomey. Get past her own. She can get to the shot. Val Smith really encouraging Nicole Toomey with this ball because as we play in 14 of 18 in the context of the match, this is a big ball, but she's brought it in on the old narrow searching line. Clean run through. And will be second shot, and that's fine. I know Val Smith would have liked to have been outside that of the the centre line. And you just feel like the momentum, the pendulum, if you will, is just beginning to swing back towards the Australian team. Well, wow, that's about, you know, we've just seen the last couple of ends. Kylie Whitehead has certainly, you know, got some pretty good balls in and around the head. Lindsay Clark looking to get down to the jack. Now you heard her say right idea, so they're already early on in this head now, although skips are coming on board now. But you can see trying to play with weight to those lines, weight to the jack. So, <laughs> did you see that Nicole gave Val one clap? Just the one. <laughs> Let's not overdo it. One clap of support. So Let's see if she has claps of congratulations at the end of this poll. So here now, Val Smith, as we play this, the 14th on the backhand, leading 13-7. Come on, Val. Oh, she's on a good wider line. Now needs to work now, though. Needs to work to to get to good first ball it's over the head that's absolutely fine you do feel like this rank is changing as the day wears on slowing down Natasha on the forehand this is a good ball here from the Australian skip and for two, are we on the forehand right. now Kev? oh I think You've so got a bowl sitting at five o'clock I think so there's bowls and jacks to hit. You may as well hit it on the forehand. You may as well hit it on the, f- or draw it on the forehand, I suppose. I sp- well, the forehand at least, at the minimum, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and that's because there is room, of course, for the for the uh, Australians to draw another shot here. I think we've got last ball, don't we? I see Aussie scored the first one. Oh no, she's tight. Very tight. This is a good end for Australia, and we need to stop the rot. The New Zealand team needs to stop the rot here. One, two. I thought it was only two. That was my thought, uh, Alex. 
This game, dear it is two. two. This game, 39, 39 now. It's, it's tightening the, up. The big end. It's tightening up. We're on the 15th end of 18. So three to go after this. The great end to score if you're a New Zealander. And we hear the pantomime crowd there. Australia scoring a one in the other match I see over there. The Australian teams, interesting, the two triples teams adjacent to our rank in this one, both employing the pull the man up tactic. Well, it worked for them on that last end, Alex, so, you know, one can understand. It must be nice for the Australians to have the teammates next door as well. Oh, absolutely. The two teams. Once, you know, we all know when we've played an interclub or an centre match and you have your two teams next to each other, I suppose, Australia and the, and the pennant situation, just the momentum that you can start to get, particularly when you're forging a comeback as these two Australian teams are doing. Now, of course, this game, 9-13, and the other game, I think, 12-13 or 11-13, perhaps. 11-13, as we watch, Liam Paulson's got a metre here to draw the shot, but again, this is the, how far is it going to hold under the Try line? To get a clean run. I would have loved it not to have a wick there, but holding the shot, Liam Paulson. On, Kylie. Yeah. Kylie Whitehead, a Donga player, and a fall short here. I do have Piers News, Kev. That's 2011 up now to Kalina. That's not even a name. No, it's not, actually. <laughs> Caitlin, Caitlin and Selena. Caitlin and Selena, what did I say? 2011 up, and they have played They've played 15 ends. So the women's pairs combination that we saw go so well at the Commonwealth Games, the bronze medal. I can tell uh, you the men's... Tracking nicely here. Men's fours leading 11-6. 11-6 after, I think it's 10 of... It is 10 of 15. So a change of hand. hand. This is a good change of hand, isn't it? What a change of hand this good is. Shot. Just past the head. That's fine. So and shot. I'll pose you a question, Kev. We've seen Leanne now switch the forehand with that bolt. And she started off the first, uh, what, eight or nine ends. Brilliant. We've seen her switch to the forehand now. Does Leanne switch hands? Is she playing the backhand upon the return towards the clubhouse? Well... Oh, just uh, trying to get a nip on the jack there to Lindsay Clark, because I think now for New Zealand, uh, the on this particular end, and I would be staying with it. The forehand is the counting, you know, the for, the forehand is the counting, uh, the counting side for New Zealand, as we see. Nicole Toomey, she's close. Needs to just weather this bowl. She's close. Needs a good couple of more rolls. Really good. This is a no good end count. for the New Zealand team. They're bouncing back, showing a bit of fight. Also, what it's doing right now, Alex, it is making the shot play for Australia difficult mm. because they're sort of the angles. And we've seen now, Lindsay Clark is on that jack it's shirt. Narrow. Is narrow under the line. Why is it holding, Kev? Don't want <laughs> it to sit on anything. It's got dead weight. That's the pre reason. Good bowl. No, no, good no, bowl, no. Lindsay. But now Nicole Toomey, absolutely. Got the bowling behind as well, Alex. Can now reach up there, through on that backhand side. Get to the bowl. By goodness, it's all tightening up. The New Zealand women's pairs, as we know, got a nice little lead over the Australians. Uh, playing down on the bottom green. New Zealand means fours leading 11-6. No, twisted the hand. Pray for a bit of luck if she gets clean underneath that. On to Leanne's bowl. Yeah, fair enough. Can I ask you, Alex, one thing going forward for the New Zealand coaching yes. fraternity? Yes. Whoever gets in this New Zealand side, that they get out and some players get out and practice for hours about uh, staying outside the line, not inside the line with weight. It's so important that. Uh, that and it's in today's game and the speed of the greens that we play on Australia. It is imperative mm. that that we get that. I would say we lift that percentage of results. Yeah, that, certainly. That effectiveness. There is a number of different drills that the players do do as we see the Australian skip here. 
Timba. Here is a chance for Val Smith on the back end. Bowl or Jack? Bowl's well, better. It's opened up good, actually, to be fair, Alex, because of that bowl there that just came in, it's narrowing that line that you can play down there with a lot of weight. If she, if she is short on this, I'll be shocked to my core. She's definitely not going to be. She's short in stature, but she certainly <laughs> won't be short in the in the, uh, the speed that this, uh, the pace that this bowl will come down the green. That's why Val Smith has the triple skip. Watch this bowl. First bowl, one down on the head. 632 matches for New Zealand. On the forehand. And coming down. Trying to get to that bowl. Needs to work now. Don't touch any of these Australian bowls on the way through. That's the... It's the danger. What she's done there, Kev, has cleverly made the target bigger. That's yeah, but you've got to play it at, but you have to play it at full place, Alex. It was uh that was that was that was a shame. <laughs> I don't well, have much else to say. She's, well, Val Smith well, even now she can go at oh, full ball, but bowl. it's gonna be three in a moment. It's gonna be three in a moment. No, falls outside. Has to drive it. Has to drive it. Where's the New Zealand coaches? Please tell them to has, <laughs> has to play this with a lot of weight. Shall down we through see there. the smoke signal? <laughs> Excuse me. Here we go. We'll see what she opts to play anyway. New Zealand in a little bit of trouble here. 39 up on the card, two down on the head. Val Smith on the backhand. This is close here. Val Smith, she's close this here. Was the Needs it to get down. Val Smith, stretch, good stretch. shot. What well a ball. We count. That's two. What a bolt. Regardless of what happens there, <laughs> she played it well. Everything's okay in the world. Well, out comes the tape. But it just makes a difference in that, in that weight that you play, Alex. And yeah. that's the... I'm sorry I pleaded for her to play that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's a good bowl there from Val Smith. Wonderful correction, particularly from the first bowl. And again, I think it's just that experience, you know. It would be easy to have played her first bowl and go, well... That's in. That definitely... Two there. So it was. Eight shot from Val Smith. What a shot. What's well, a four shot turnaround on that head there, Alex? Yeah. Last bowl, four shot turnaround. You now go to 15 9. Another end gone. We play 16 of 18. Those are the big bowls, those big conversion shots. That's what gets you home. Oh, great stuff there from Val Smith. Just as it was feeling like the pendulum was swinging in the wrong direction if you're a New Zealand supporter Val Smith has pulled one out of the bag there played a great shot, turned the head around 2 to New Zealand, 15-9 now the score Sorry, I got quite excited <laughs> oh, You and me both, Kev <laughs> And just quickly over there to those New Zealand fours I can tell you it is now New Zealand leading over Hong Kong after 10 of 15 ends and it is New Zealand leading 12-6 and that means fours semi-final 12-6 of course the best place to go for results updates well there's a few of them and it's hard not to find updates because they're everywhere Kevin but you can have a look on the Bowls New Zealand Facebook page you can have a look on the Bowls Australia Facebook page you can look on the Bowls New Zealand website you can look on the Bowls Australia website you can go to Bowls link you know they're everywhere so just have a nosy Google multi-nations after you finish watching this broadcast the results will be everywhere for you to find uh, from both all the week uh, coming up and all the week to go and a good opening bowl here from Liam Paulson right to the centre line about right out in front of us here good playing up towards the clubhouse end that's about half a metre in behind but that's fine so here is Kylie Whitehead who certainly the last few ends has been quite impressive uh, for the Australian combination and again it's going good to shot. draw just right to the jack yeah really draw, well played that look at that a back toucher draws a back toucher been a great game really between these two triples teams one of changing fortunes I think New Zealand did the hard work in the beginning we well, saw Natasha miss a couple of drive shots it comes back Alex those uh, those 16 sections that we were talking about you know this is when it uh, you know New Zealand got to you know really have to hold and that last end was such a big end and in, in that 16 section as we watch this bowl of Leanne Paulson's just going to drift by good stuff and that's fine the biggest thing here for New Zealand of course is that second on this particular end 
second shot more than likely becomes you know the best shot in the book really yeah it's about managing the scoreboard again leading by six with two ends to go after this one drop a one here then pick a, a score up when you've got last bowl and you can manage the last end you're okay Nicole Toomey on the backhand side uses the the back of the mat utilizes the back of the mat with her foot placement well it's whatever hand that you're most comfortable you're going to get second shot with really Alex as it comes down towards the centre these line shadows, there. Look at these shadows and just across yeah, the green. And that's well short. That's a good six feet short. Been saying the green... It's only one down on the head, sure. But, you know, it's putting now a lot of pressure on the back end of this side. This will be two as you watch this bowl of Lindsay Clark's come in between the Lee and Paulson bowls. Imperative here for the New Zealand player. No, stay on that hand. Don't try and block two up. <laughs> you know, please. That's, you know, it's the last thing that Val Smith wants. I see South Africa at last have scored over here in the other semi-final, Alex. That's Australia versus South Africa and the other women's peers. So you watch this bolt of Nicole Toomey's coming down towards. It's going to sail past. Needs to sit on something. Doesn't do so. This is now a sticky head for New Zealand. It is, it is, and it's still, I mean, the Australians, they just, you're never comfortable playing Australia, are you, Kev? And it, never. They just have that wonderful winning attitude. <laughs> we'll be three down in but a second, and we are. 15-9 New Zealand lead, definitely three down. And I know the thought here for Val Smith is second shot, is the go here yeah your yeah, scoreboard well yes. that that last bowl of lindsay clark's that came in which literally is jack level that's that's your jack that's your that's uh, that's where you're aiming to and i'm sure val smith will play that forehand side and that's the bowl that val will try and get to to give herself a second shot remembering it's 18 ends, no time limit. I'm sure Alex said, but a, that's correct. A while yeah, no, ago. no time limit. As you watch this bowler, Val Smith needs another yard of running. Nicole, no good girls trying to encourage something when the poor skip's been left in this predicament. <laughs> oh, interesting times. It's going to be a, a fascinating end to this game. We see Australia. How, what, how many are they actually holding there, Kev? It's at least two. three. Three, we think. So the two bowls that are close to the jack and the one that's level into I'm the I'm sure side. that bowl of valves didn't cut any of the bowls out behind the head. No, just been confirmed to me by Mark Noble it didn't. So to get the second shot, Val Smith's got to beat her own bowl by about two feet. And that would give her a second shot. So here is Rebecca Van Ash will play down under the Val Smith line. Might just duck away. Might work favourably for us. No, it won't because that will more than likely count as well, I would say. And so here's the, a big well, the, here. well, the big thing for Val Smith here is to beat her last bowl, beat her own bowl, to endeavour to get second shot. Here is Val Smith, that very deliberate stance on the forehand. At least, I think, three down. I don't know how it looked out of the hand. I'm looking out the window here now as it comes down. Needs to get to her own and turn it in and does so and will make second shot. And that's really, that's as good as the shot, Alex. <laughs> we take it and we run. She's happy with that ball as we near this end of the end of the game. We've played 16 ends. There's two to go. Australia, if you're Aussie, what are, you, what are we playing here? What are they playing here to score more than one? Because they want to score more than one. Well, the, the score difference is six. Mark that shot down with Val Smith. Put a tick next to that bowl because that's the bowl which has really put us, I think, in a strong position now. We don't know what Rebecca Van Ash is going to do, of course, but it puts us in a strong position going into those last couple of ends when it was looking pretty nasty. Oh, it <laughs> certainly was, and it's felt... How did you put it? It was coming. The, the game has felt precarious for about the last five ends, I feel. It's been a precarious feeling game. The uh, New Zealand team played so well for the first two thirds. And we've just seen a couple of sniffs for Australia. And they're still looking here. They're still looking at how they can make a number happen. 
try yeah. and roll Val Smith's bowl, the one that you see at 10 o'clock to the jack, out of the head. They'll, see, they'll go for it. Either that or you just try and uh, uh, play a, a, a draw shot for two. Then you'd be 11-15 on the penultimate end. Big debate going over in the men's fours. Mm. I think there's some dis dispute about the board or the number. New Zealand side all gone over with Mike Carroll. The whole Hong Kong side all got together. The scoreboard is reading 12 7, I think it is. Yes, and I can see a 12, so that would make it 12 7 after, after 11, 11 ends. ends. So, what shot is Rebecca Van Ash going to play? 14 11, South Africa lead Australia in the other semi final of the women's triples. 14 11 after 15 of uh, 18 ends. You know, I think she might draw two, draw for two, and you make yourself four down, two to go, and you just back yourself to score. Australia's look like they're going to score numbers on every end for the last three or four, and New Zealand's facing balls to salvage it. Draw two here, then get two on the next end, then two on the next end, force an extra one. Interesting, though, Alex, that Rebecca Van Ash has put a lot of thought in. I don't think she's really in the comfort zone of what shot she wants to play. She would ideally like to play to the Val Smith Bowl. As we and see. by goodness, is that what she is Natasha, doing? Natasha, she's on the backhand. What's happening here? Let's just wait and see. Gets the jack over the side. She sliced the jack over. She sprung it for it. What's happened here? Three, I would say. I, just the way how, just looking quickly at the bowls out there, I saw a blue bowl and two Australian bowls, another conference in the, in the middle of the green. If that's a three for Australia. It didn't actually look on Alex, well, did it? Well, how you miss a bowl by three feet and get a miracle result. That's 15-12 uh, it is. 15-12 mm. to New Zealand as we, uh, we've played 16 of the 18 ends. And now, Alex, this is when Leanne Paulson and Nicole Toomey this is why you wear the silver fern. It this is, is when yeah. you've got to really step up. Yeah, so it's 12.15. You'd think that Natasha would have just sort of gone, oh, so, sorry. <laughs> well, I thought she was in I two. I thought she was in two minds all the way. Yes, that's what they played. Oh, you know, that's what they played for. Fair play to the Australian team, but there was no clapping. She let it go. She thought she'd missed it. She didn't miss it. The jack got sliced over. They got three shots, and that's bowls, isn't it? It is bowls, it's what happens. There's so big applause to... going on there for the South Africans. I can hear that was definitely the South Africans applauding as Kelsey <laughs> Cottrell making her way up the rink to to uh, see what has happened. As we go back to Kylie Whitehead now, who certainly made a difference with, uh, with that moving the jack. So Kalina is a hybrid of Caitlin and Selena. That's what I said, yeah, <laughs> Kalina. Yep. And that way, if we do that, uh, you don't have to say Caitlin and Selena, do you, Kev? You that's, go a good, that's a good call. We're just, that's Team fine. Team Kalina. <laughs> that should be what they refer to from now on. Uh, good opening bowl there from Liam Paulson on this, the 17th and 17 of 18 in the semi-final here of the women's triples at the Multi Nations here. And the beautiful broad beach as we watch the bowl of Kylie White here. Trying to get down to the jack. Gets, no it doesn't. Just goes by. New Zealand fours, men's fours leading 12-7 after 11 of 15. And I think you said to me before, Alex, there's no time limit now. Is that correct? Yeah, they'll just play the full the full ends out. Although, of course, the jack is respotted. So there's only so long a game can go for. Look in the background. You can see the Australians willing that pole on. But meanwhile in this game, 12-15 is the score. New Zealand leading by three on the penultimate end. Leanne Paulson has two more bowls to go. We'll finish Jack level. Good shot. That's a good bowl. N now the key is, Alex, we've got to get behind. All New Zealand has to do is score on this end. Got to get behind. It's got to score. It's nice to hold those shots there right now, but we've got to get behind the head. Lindsay Clark trying to get down to the jack with the counting bowls. Not sure whether it will. It's going to run away. Now, Nicole Toomey, this is your moment. 
must be behind. He passed Nicole. <laughs> oh, and, well, yeah. even if it turns the the impulsion bowl over in, into the head and turns it in behind, Alex is, is absolutely fine. Two things she can't beat is narrow and short. That's a, so here is Nicole Toomey and... She's past the head, so we go clean through the gap. Through the it's gap, okay, clean. Kid. It's okay. You're okay. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> She's past the head, so that's a good a good weight there from Nicole Toomey. And the New Zealand team will be looking to manage this. They've worked so hard to You're get a lead. You're Alex. 15-12. <laughs> Nicole Toomey's next bowl is important. Australia, they have their tails up. They don't so know when they've beaten the Australian Closer here, team. Lindsay Clark. Closer here. Closer here. All but the jack. Well, it's worth a conversation. Yeah, okay, so Val just asking. Absolutely, yeah, that's a great call, Val. That's exactly skipping right. there from Val Smith. Yeah, forget it. And yet that shadow's right across the green now, Alex. So we are seeing, and it'll you be know, slowing a, down. a change of pace, definitely. Here down. is Toomey now on the forehand. Close, Nicole. If got you've got the weight, on, you're close. Got it out on that wider line. That's good. Hasn't Run got, it out. Hasn't got the Get weight. The curling brooms. Hasn't got the weight. But what it does do, what it does do, Sit down. it tightens the line up, a line up for uh, Nicole uh, Van Ash. Natasha Van Ash's line has just been tightened. By goodness, it's a pretty in-depth conversation there the New Zealand girls are having. And who knows, the bowl in the cold term is down the back of the head here. May well be the bowl that makes a difference. Well, it's a good thing that it was past the head. So we see the three New Zealanders just talk about it there. I think one of the semi final in the men's has been completed. It's Australia v Queensland. Australia's won that and one. Australia has won that. New Zealand lead in the other semi final. 12 7 after 11 of 15. And here we have Natasha Van Eldick. She's played well. She's finishing strong in this game. We saw early on a few bowls go awry, but Natasha on we, the backhand. We know that she won't be short. That is correct. And it looks like Leanne Paulson's holding one to the bowl at 9 o'clock for about three more what seconds. Was, Look at this was, here from Natasha. Was, was, Beautiful shot. Three shots. Beautiful shot. Three shots. Uh, this is where I'm not going to have a not going to criticise players at all, but it just makes highlights getting that bowl effectiveness, Alex, doesn't it? Yeah, that? Australia, they've got their tails up here. They never know when they've lost a game until it's actually over, and they don't know that they've lost this one yet. <laughs> As we see, Val well, Smith, she's got two bowls. So Val Smith now has got to play with real confident weight on the forehand, down through those counting bowls. Well played by Van Ash. Here is Val Smith, the New Zealand 632 games for New Zealand. No, that's under the head, under the line, all the way. Out of the hand oh, was under the, the line. At least the ball she hit went in the ditch, Kev. That's correct. So the situation's still the same. We've seen Val play some bombs this game. She's going to need another one with her last ball. New Zealand, they're leading by three. This is the penultimate end. There's another end to go. All New Zealand needs to do is score a point, and we're looking okay at the moment with three down. No doubt, that Alex, and no doubt the New Zealand selectors, you know, would be uh, no doubt looking, thinking about this, this areas of our areas of our game where we just need to improve our percentage returns, and that's so important in these at the, at the clutch moments and. I can tell you now, Van Ash is going to play to try and sit the inside of the bowl of the Impulsions to make four of it. That's where she indicated she's going to go. So here is Rebecca Van Ash, very experienced. Australian player Sorry, Natasha no, Van Natasha. <laughs> and, uh, it's a very, it's a, it's very exciting, yeah, yeah, Kev. I understand. Well, fortunately, <laughs> I'm she's, excited too. She's gone under the head. Sorry, Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, three Van, down, New Zealand. Van last name, and the stress. Well, I mean, the stress is getting to me. To be honest, I can't watch uh, Val Smith's last bowl. It's the penultimate end. I'll let you call it, Kev. Three down on the forehand. Needs to make sure that it doesn't. Go narrowing up on the way down, and it is. I 
I just... Okay. I suppose I should update the scoreboard. Well. So we see a game, 15 Kevin, apiece. where the first 17 ends have been absolutely wasted because they're 15 all. 15 apiece last end. This is a one end shootout here. If the Jack is killed, gets respotted on the two metre mark. So in about seven and a half minutes, we're going to know if it is New Zealand or Australia through to the multi nations women's triples final. All square. Well, we have last bowl. That's what I'm clinging on to. I must say, you know, that uh, Nicole, that we've seen, I think the Paulson in the main give New Zealand a pretty good foundation uh, on most ends. And by goodness, this is the end that she must do so. All, all locked up, 15 all. And we've seen the last uh, half a dozen ends now with the mat, with the mat coming up. Kylie Whitehead has certainly lifted, uh, lifted greatly. Two bowls, Leanne Paulson. Two yeah. bowls. Well, that very deliberate look. On the forehand. On the mat. Peter Ballas in the background. On the forehand. Just run out the there. line. Run no, it out. No, it won't. It won't. Another end completed in the men's fours. Can't quite see the board from here, but I do know Hong Kong China are still in single fig figures. 12 9. 12 9 after 12 ends. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> so, Cardi okay. Whitehead. Here we go, Leanne Paulson. This is your last bowl of the game. You've played so well. You've got good line with your first bowl. Just make the correction with your second. We're all square. Got to win this game. Got to win this game, got to win this end. Just one point would do. One point would be fine. Well, certainly got, I think, has got the weight. That's and the a lot. correction. Has it got the That's weight? That's a correction. Has it got the weight and finish on the centre line? Needed another two rolls. Good bowl from Liam Paulson. Made a correction from her first bowl. Now, Nicole Toomey. The pressure falls to you. We're all square here at Broad Beach. And Lindsay Clark trying to get to the jack. Here's trouble. Lindsay Clark. It's the advantage of being up. I feel like South Africa may have just played quite a good ball. <laughs> I think, I think South there. Africa have played a very good ball. Well, there's a good response from one half of the teams. So, Nicole Toomey, big ball required here. Please don't undergreen yourself. So here's some good news, Kev, while we wait for We'll just watch this bowl, then I'll pass on the good news. Get past, get it square then, Nicole. Had to get it, and does, and does. Well played. You don't, Still one down. I mean, you, no, we're holding the one. That was, I've just, I can't cope. <laughs> I can tell you, Caitlin and Selena won 21-20, which is, <laughs> what's important there is that they won the game. So let's be... Caitlin and Selena have won the game, so we've got a Piers finalist, Caitlin and Selena. Kalina, if you will, have made the Piers final for the multi nations to be played later on this week. And so too have South Africa. They have won their way through to the final of the triples. Will they play New Zealand? Will they play South Africa? I don't know. So is it going to be Australia? Is it going to be New Zealand? We know South Africa are home. Lindsay Clark looking for the shot bowl. Looks Lindsay to be Clark. wide. Jack! Oh, oh, she moved Leanne Paulson's ball over one roll somehow. Somehow the ball has moved. It's actually the hand of God has moved that ball closer to the jack. We know that the Australians just going to go jack in the ditch. Oh, absolutely they are. And this is why this bowl of Nicole Toomey's must be between that and the ditch. I'm looking down right Nicole over the top of it here. On the forehand. And has it got the weight to get, get past. all the One's weight? Fine. You've got to get past has the head. Has it got the weight? Has it got gotta the get weight past. to get past? No, it's not. So it's New Zealand line one. Second shot is the bowl of Kylie Whitehead. New Zealand's bowl. Sit, the other bowl sits out to the side. Here's a replay. Watch the hand of God here. Move Leanne Polson's bowl. You get a feather off that one. And then off we go. Up and over. One bowl closer to the jack. So we know the New Zealand women's pairs are through after winning 21-20. The New Zealand men's fours 
are leading. I can't think. It is 12 7, I think. 12, 12 9, New Zealand lead. Now, still got a couple of ends to go as we watch now Natasha Van Eldick on the match trying to get to the jack. I'm looking right outside the window here, and the New Zealand girls all bunched up watching closely. This is very stressful, Kevin. Here's, on the backhand. Here's Van Elder looking for the jack. She's wide. Looking for the jack. It's gone. Wide of it. Now we need Val Smith to get. Please, Val, just get between the shot bowl, the shot bowl and the ditch. We'll see Val follow her bowl up. The New Zealanders will stand there waiting. Does, does Val go jack in the ditch? No, oh, that's... <laughs> I mean, it must be. There's got to be a temptation. If, you, if Val goes jack in the ditch, the Australians can't do it, can they? Uh, I thought that actually. <laughs> but I don't think we're Why going. <laughs> I don't think we're going to. Okay. Okay. That's all good. So here's now Val Smith going to her forehand. I still feel she needs to endeavour to get between the jack where it sits, just off the two metre mark. Ideally to get to there and behind it to the ditch line trying to coax the bowl as the New Zealanders gets the knock this is exactly where we want him it stays up, it stays up it does, Brilliant. that's a Good fantastic shot there from bowl Val Smith. yeah don't get much better than that right to the ditch that's about where the jack may end up so here is and Natasha wanting to play it on the forehand and that's because Val's bowl is where the jack will go if Natasha plays it on the backhand side I don't know how Natasha could possibly get the weight to play it on the forehand You'd have to go around that short bowl, that brilliant block that Leanne Paulson put in with her first one. You'd have to just about go around it on the forehand oh, and I move think, the bowl I, clean. I think, Alex, the backhand jack in the ditch, Val Smith's got the shot regardless. I can't see it going any other way. That's the thing. Except back towards the number. So we see Natasha now switching to the forehand option to remove the shot bowl of Leanne Paulson's well, and sit there well, for one. But you, but you can also remove her own bowl, the other blue bowl mm. as well. I will know in about 15 seconds, Kev. So here is Natasha Van Elder on the mat, playing on the forehand, trying to get to the jack, playing with controlled weight, she trying to get down. They're looking closely at it, are the Australians? Looking closely, and it goes by and misses, and New Zealand are through to the final. Magnificent play there from New Zealanders on the last end, and really came about, Alex, from that great bowl that Val Smith put in with her last bowl. Really, it really cut the shot options off. And New Zealand run out the winners by 16 to 15. Uh, so that's our triple shoot of the, the, medal, the gold medal round. And, of course, our peers who have won 21-20, also over Australia. And our men's fours are leading Hong Kong uh. by 12... <coughs> Excuse me. It's 12, I think it's 12 8 or so. But yes, that is, I mean, that's essentially what's happened, Kev. I, um, I feel drained <laughs> having watched that. But congratulations to the New Zealand team winning that triples 16 points to 15. It's a great effort. And just for the viewers, thank you very much for tuning in. Remember, we're not broadcasting tomorrow. We're back the day after tomorrow, which I think is a Tuesday if today's Monday. We're back on oh we're back on Wednesday. We're back on Wednesday because today's Monday. So back on Wednesday. Stay tuned on the Bowls New Zealand and Bowls Australia social media and Facebook pages uh, for results as it goes on. Uh, but until then, until Wednesday, uh, Kevin and I are going to bid you adieu. Sit back, relax, and enjoy highlights from that amazing match. pretty quick how far away Alex gets the jack might oh. works for New Zealand got this this ball when's it going to stop that's the question not soon enough and going very quick she's close going very she's close quick. she's got it in the in the woman's fours and well played Nicole Great Toomey shot from and Nicole she's Toomey. right in behind it on the backhand Nicole Toomey willing it to hold she's got the jack clean and well trailed played. it back what a bowl well played for the what Wellington player bowl. get down how's good this 
Oh. Well, it's only one. Good roll here from the Australian skip. And for two, are we on the full? Val Smith on the backhand. This is close here. Val Smith, she's close this here. Was Needs the it to get this down. Val Smith, split, split. good shot. Well what a played. Bowl. We count. That's two. What a bowl. Here, let's just wait and see. Gets the jack over the side. She sliced the jack over. She sprung it. Can was, look at this here was, from the Tasha. Was, was. Beautiful shot. Three shots. Beautiful shot. Where then, Nicole? Had to get it. And does. And does. Well played. Clark looking for the shot bowl. Looks Lindsay to be Clark. wide. Jack. Oh, oh, she moved Leanne Paulson's bowl. New Zealand is through to the final. Magnificent play there from New Zealand's on the last end. And really came about. New Zealand is through to the final. Magnificent play there from New Zealand's on the last end.